This Drake versus Kendrick battle has been crazy, but what's even crazier for me is the lessons that I've learned watching this battle because we have not seen any beef, especially at this scale, happen in the social media era. Yeah, this is yeah. the first one, and I think there's a lot of notes that artists should take in general that you can use for your regular career, um, or anybody can take in general that they can use for their regular career when they talk about media manipulation. Um, so we want to approach this episode, all right, like more documentation, right? Okay. Lessons to be learned if you want to apply it towards how you can make yourself look good or bad in a tough branding moment, right? Um, and of course, if you're beefing, any artist who, who's beefing in the future, <laughs> this is the episode. If you win, I, I hope y'all give us credit that I won the beef because I watched this episode and learned some things. But we're really going to approach it like this. This isn't to go viral. This isn't any of that stuff. We are literally going to go through some points and try to be thorough. And hopefully y'all who watch this learn a lot from it and or who have been watching the battle we'll kind of try to expand on why some points worked um and some moves that drake or kendrick did work and why some didn't here's the seven points just to do a quick review all right so the first point just just a few, few um points that we're gonna go through we're gonna talk about what does winning look like in general like what is winning today what has winning been when it comes to a beef specifically in hip-hop the positioning of the artists, like their their brands going into the battle. What impact was that? All right. The social media PR, the manipulation that's going on, because beyond the music, there are marketing campaigns going on throughout this battle. If y'all don't notice, mm -hmm. there's money being paid. Right. For some of these posts that y'all are seeing, there's relationships being called on for some of these posts and things that are that are happening. Right. There's a, 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 a meta war that's happening. Also. Just what did we learn in general, like specifically from these battles that opened our minds in terms of those dynamics that are different specifically because of social media and how people interact in culture today. Also, we're going to talk about who uh, should Drake respond or not, because Drake has not really responded um, based on the fact that people are saying that he lost. All right. Then we're going to talk about Drake's mistakes. Why Kendrick won? And is this good for hip hop? Now, people who are like, yo, what do you mean? Like, why Kendrick won? Look, this is about what the culture is saying as a whole, not necessarily our opinions. We are documenting this to be learned from for ourselves, right? To document what we've learned and also for people to be able to take and win a battle in the future. Yeah, hopefully. We want our credit if yeah. you take this information and win a battle in the future. So we can't just put insert our opinion and say, hey, well, I prefer Drake stuff personally if, I, if that's how I feel. That has nothing to do with did I win or not point blank it's like the nba if y'all watch the nba or any sport but let's just say the referee calls a foul well you're like yo that wasn't a foul he shouldn't have called that foul but the fact is the foul did get called and we're talking about the fact that the foul did get called why did it get called mm -hmm. period right so the first and foremost oh what and just a little addition for those who might be like oh man i don't believe you're not biased i want to i want to go to this tweet Remember, people was like, ah, Kendrick's not responding. He's not responding fast enough. In that period, although when I learned about the real timelines, it's like, dang, I fell into the hole. Kendrick didn't really take as long as it seemed. But I tweeted, I'm not as big of a fan as Drake's drop and give me 50 as a lot of people are. I do think it's solid. But if Kendrick doesn't respond until May, Drake has the W by technical knockout. Mm -hmm. At least. It's not because he necessarily hit him. But hey, he the only one responded like Kendrick. You just it's just too long. So even if Kendrick goes crazy and destroyed Drake, at that point in my mind, it would be a second match. But you lost the first one. Okay, that's how I would look at it. I tweeted this just to let y'all know. Like I am not biased personally when it comes to those like coming into this battle. Now, what I saw and what I felt again, we might touch on some of that stuff. But even worse. At that point, I couldn't even be mad if Drake didn't reply immediately. If Drake took like two, three months, that's how I felt. Like if Kendrick takes forever, shoot, I mean, Drake, you don't even have to get back to him in, for a minute because Drake was dropping, dropping, giving me 50. That was after dropping and giving me 50. So I think I dropped, posted this before Taylor made possibly. Yeah. All right. So yeah. like that's just to give you, again, just a sense of like where my mind was at, at, during this battle um, and how I saw both of them. Now, what does winning look like today? What are the things that are required to win? Number one, you need to win culture. Culture is what matters the most. Yep. Right? Period. 
and people need to understand that what that looks like and how that is more than you and your bubble because the artist they know that they need to win culture they don't need to win the end of individual random fan who's going to love them regardless yep right it's nice that they have you and they're going to use you right to count towards their total but they need more than you yep. they know that right so you should be looking at that versus just your individual opinion especially if you're an artist and you need to and you actually might need to go through some of these types of, of moments in time there's a difference between your core audience and the culture as a whole also you need numbers also you need to have your image right come out clean or better than the other person that we're talking about beef yeah at least right? stable yep and then there's another element of fan fatigue i'll get to that in a, in a different part but also bars we need bars that stick specifically memorable is nice right but the best ones are repeatable yep like people can use them in their everyday life over and over again um yes they might just say it randomly to themselves but the best ones are i could use them against somebody else right and we'll kind of give some examples towards that but those are the primary things right winning culture numbers we do want to see some numbers you got to have something there right image and then bars to stick those are the most important things right and we got to throw in t a little bit but i put that into image right okay where you're just okay. throwing out these rumors and all the gossipy stuff as much as i don't like that stuff it is what it is so it matters again this is not about what we like so winning culture jacory you had a moment where you talked about the ja rule 50 cent beef versus the kendrick and drake yeah. and how that's relevant in winning culture now but also more importantly the future yeah can you speak on that yeah man so this might be might be showing my age a little bit um close but you know there, there are a lot of people today who are in hip-hop culture that know of the ja rule and 50 beef right mm -hmm. we're all pretty aware we we it's it's pretty um pretty strong senses at this point that 50 Cent was undisputably the winner. Mm. But I was old enough to be around back then when it was actually happening. And at the time, it wasn't as obvious. One, because Ja Rule was way bigger of an artist than than, than 50 Cent. You know, to, to yep. give him, you know, a, a modern standard. I mean, he was essentially the, the Drake of, of the, what, mid-2000s, you know, the early 2000s, whenever that was. So it's like, it, it, it would be the equivalent of like Drake beefing with Baby Keem and like Baby Keem coming out on top. You know what I'm saying? Like you gonna give Fifty Cent Baby Keem level? Maybe not. I'm trying to think who will be a, a who will be a, maybe like Drake beefing with the baby right now. I'll give you a closer yeah. to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Drake beefing with the baby and the baby coming out on top. Right? It was it was at the time it was unseen in the beginning of the beef. Ja Rule didn't even respond because it just it felt like the gap was so wide that like it wasn't even worth his time. And you know, Fifty Cent being Fifty Cent. He was innovative in the way that he was able to irk Ja Rule and, and, and eventually he got under his skin. The beef became what it was and you fast forward 10, 20, 30 years later, they're, they're now young adults and teenagers who know who Ja Rule is, but as a result of the outcome of that battle, they have no idea about the legacy he built before, yep. how much of a run he was on, how much you know influence he had at the time when 50 Cent came for him. And I say it to say that, um, you know, we made the, the point about public perception and you know sometimes it's hard it's hard to gauge public perception around things in the moment because both sides are still really active and really talking mm -hmm. about it you can only truly gauge the change in public perception once things have quieted down a little bit and culture continues to move forward and you see how the culture treats the people that were a part of the beat right you know what i'm saying that's, that's a big deal and i think again uh, the points that we're gonna go through i feel like hopefully we help flesh some of that out because what I just thought about while you were saying that is Jay-Z and Nas had their moment. Mm -hmm. Ja Rule and 50 had their moment. But when you looked into the future, the way things played out, Jay-Z's brand ended up okay. Yeah. More than okay yeah. in many ways. And Ja Rule's brand not. did not recover. Yeah. Right? And why is that? Right? And why did one stick more than another? And I think some of those things are have happened during this battle, but we don't I don't know let's just say most of the rebranding or hit brand wise is being taken right now is Drake. That's right. right? Yeah, 100%, yep. um, but I don't know. I think you yeah, definitely think we need to talk about like, is it going to stick to that same extent? I think it's also a little different because Ja Rule was 
like you're a gangster and then we strip that away from you. Yep. Right? Yeah, that's what he tried to do, yep. Drake, although he may play tougher than some people like at moments, everybody still has always known and that Drake isn't that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of like, it's different when Ja Rule actually had a believability for a period of time for some people and then he got stripped away from you and that mattered because street brand was one of the primary brands in music Yeah, where Drake yeah. exists in a brand where the street brand isn't as isn't that necessary to be at the top but if you don't decide to go in that side of the pond and the little bit he did play nobody believed it about him and that's part of why it's a, one of the gripes of Drake as a matter of fact Drake has a little bit more involvement in certain things, allegedly, than people are even willing to believe. So they don't even even won't even believe. Like if if you hear Drake punch somebody, people will not believe it first. Yeah, and you have to convince them versus the other way around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, like that part, I don't think is taking that hit is one thing. It's more of the, you know, the pedo thing that a lot of hit is being taken around with Drake. So does is that going to to last? That's something that we can, we can't observe as um uh, as strictly as we're going to speak on the other things, but I think that would be like the main difference. Like one, we thought you were this, we were leaning on this and it got stripped away from you in Ja Rule. This is oh, now you got like a red letter, you know, attached to you. Do we don't know if we can mess with you. It's not even like we don't believe your music anymore. It's not music based. That's what it is. Yeah, I and mean, it's like, and now we're scrutinizing your every move to see if there's some validity to it. Right. In a way right, that like right, right. we maybe were kind of paying attention to before, but now we're paying attention to it with the intention to put put two and two together. Right. Because it'll be more of a instead of a I just don't believe you and don't want to listen to you because I don't believe you. It's more of a if anything, a cultural shaming yeah. that happens with listening to you, similar to R. Kelly. Yep. All right, that's the only comparison that we have in that regard. Yep. Um, well, I mean, technically, you have the allegations around Michael, but he was so different, and I think it, the the they're 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 painting him more in a R. Kelly than a Michael way. Yeah, I think Michael's was different too because you couldn't really hear the public ballads. I feel like the R. Yeah. R. Kelly situation was the first time where like it was something of this magnitude happening and you could hear everybody's opinion. Because like, of social, okay. Yeah, of social, exactly, yeah. which is, we're gonna talk about a lot here, um, the impact social and what's changed the dynamics of these things. Um, all right, now, numbers. So Kendrick did like number one in Toronto, uh, like broken records, most listened to rap song, a regular rap song, um, and one, uh, maybe the second most listened to song ever in a short period of time on Spotify. Something like that. And within a day or something like that, right? Um, I mean, Kendrick went from number 69 on Spotify to number 20 at one period of time. I, I think he's actually at 16. So he's moving up even more in terms of most listened to artists in the world. Like 62 to number 20, while Drake actually dropped five or in streams, where you're supposed to experience an influx in streams. Yeah, which is crazy. That is crazy. I don't think any of us have been, seen anybody drop in yeah. this period of time. Never. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's wild to think about. Because to your point, right? It's like in order for this battle to to truly be won, it has to extend beyond our core culture. We need to win over people who aren't normally paying attention to this, which I think they both successfully did. So you think about this influx of attention from people that wouldn't normally be paying attention to them. Passing that attention along and your catalog still dropping, that is crazy. Yes. That is so crazy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, that's when we're also going to get into some of the image. We talked about image a little bit, but in relation to business deals, but I want to hold that because I, I don't think we can stress enough that we actually have not seen this before, not only from yeah. socials, but I think it's hard to argue that there's been a bigger moment or bigger beef in terms of size of artists. Facts, yeah. Like, I, don't, that. I don't think you can even argue that. Uh, when it comes to hip hop, and I don't think hear enough people talking about that as well. But before I get to that, but before I get to that, let's say the last element in terms of what does winning look like. This is something that helps when we we talked about the Ja Rule in the future, what played out, and oh, like the kids came up and they saw Ja Rule one way because that's the long term that matters. It's the bars that stick and rem are memorable, yep. repeatable. Kendrick, not being the guy that people 
brand as the catchy guy, he's had more individual bars, way more than Drake, that you hear people repeating. Not me, not Ja'Cory. Like you just hear people repeating. You're seeing memes about him on, on social media. Maybe Ja'Cory. Right? More than what? No, you might hear me repeating it. Maybe Ja'Cory. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, you know, no, no. I, I, I've repeated a few, for sure. For sure. But the most important part is like, this is what's happening on culture, right? At yeah. culture, right? Um, like, so I'm just going to go through a few of them. One, you got bum, the way he said bum and like that, right? The YNW Melly line. And I'm going to also differentiate some of these lines and why some matter more than others. Um, what is it? The braids? There goes another one. We got, I'm just going to say 10. Y'all can let me know if I'm missing, but this is, these are 10. You don't want to work with, with, with me no more. Okay. All right. You got OV Ho. You got A minor. You got F the big three. It's just big me. They not like us. Mm -hmm. The fan, you a fan, you a fan, you a fan. That's technically mm -hmm. a bar. Then you have freaky ad in mm -hmm. you a six nine god, mm -hmm. right? And it took me a while. I didn't realize that he turned fan into an acronym. Yeah. Like that junk is yeah. crazy. Yeah. So now just calling somebody a fan is like a whole nother. Can't even say it no more, yeah. bro. Yeah. You a fan. <laughs> oh, wait, hold up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, they not like us. Uh, wop 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 wop. Honorable mention because this isn't Kendrick. BBL Drizzy, right? Like you gotta just slide that in there. And Drake also has, and this is part of the problem. Like his two main ones, and not the fan fans. If you're listening, you might say, Ah, here's no. I, I got this bar and this bar. I'm just talking about what is social media like really leaning on it and repeating, right? Whether there's fans or not, not the ones you liked that you remember. You got drop and give me 50. People mm -hmm. were liking that for a minute. Mm -hmm. And now that's kind of died out. And then Kendrick just opened his mouth. So I him, him a Grammy right now. However, he said that, right? Yeah. Those are the two Drake lines, right? Out uh, compared to the 10 and I didn't even name all of Kendrick's right now. Here's the important part about these. Well, the ones that I think are most important. The you don't want to work with me no more. Okay. That's important to me for a reason of. Again, if you do something, right, to me, I can respond that way. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, as I always like, oh, I'm calling you a, you soft or like lame or like, you know, whatever. Like, that's a response that I, I can um, use. Or what is it, the braids? That one just is said so funny. People are going to say it a lot. Mm -hmm. But anytime you got a girl wearing braids, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she tripping, you know, and you playing off something that's actually cultural too. It's like, oh, your braids too tight. That's what he's playing yeah, off it's of. It's like the modern day. What are those? Yeah, you know I mean? exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like that's it's it's a great flip of something that culture has already said in uh, a minute. Especially women are like, oh, the braids are too tight. Ov ho, why is that important? Because anytime you see ov ho, I mean, oh, see, I even said yeah, anytime you, you see ovo, <laughs> right? Now he's rebranding your fan base and your fans' identity, right? Not necessarily, I'm not saying if you're a fan, if you're a fan, listen, you're like, well, I'm not going to be thinking about that every time, but it's not about that. It's about how the people who are who are outside the group of people. outside that group yep. looking at you, the regulars, yep. bump, bump people who are Drake haters, just the regulars, they have that in their mind now. And you got kids who are going to just be roasted. Oh, they got an OVO shirt on. OVO. Like they're going to say it, right? Like this is the, and now that one wouldn't be that important if OVO wasn't attached to the brand because it wouldn't be out there enough, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. now since OVO is something that gets used, the brand is going to show the acronym and it's going to be used. So Bum, well, I don't think it's that strong. YNW Melly was a great line, right? And that's memorable, but it's not going to be used as heavily. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And it got overshadowed really quickly. And it got overshadowed pretty quickly, yeah. right? So this is... Again, just again for those who are learning and listening and, and kind of going through this exercise with us, like it's it's really much more about in the future as we go further down, like you get out of the moment. Prisoner of the moment, that's cool. But what like, what lasts are those phrases that are gonna like sit with people. If the big three is just big meme, I could see some moments where people say that to separate themselves mm -hmm. a little bit. That that fan thing is gonna be crazy. They not like us is gonna be repeated a lot. It's already been at in, in um, baseball games, played in the NBA. Like, it's literally a phrase, I'm separating myself from them. Oh, they not like us, period. Like, that one, to me, probably is the most repeatable out of all of these because you have 
Like, what is the braids? Like, they, like there's a lot of moments. Like, some of them are going to be a little bit more cultural. OVO, you still need OVO to be around, the acronym to be there. I have to be wearing the shirt. But, like, they not like us. Also, it's clean. Yeah. Like, lyrically. Like, you're going to hear a lot of games, like, sports people. They, they'll play the that part and the chant, but they're going to have to cut off a lot of the yeah. song around it, right? Yeah. So, that has the most <laughs> ability to spread as well. All right, but it's just a general. You gave people something else to say. That's one of the most powerful. And I, and I expected to see more of this from both of them, like giving somebody else something to say as their own identity, not just like I'm saying this to talk down on Drake, or I'm saying this to talk down on Kendrick. So if somebody repeats, it, it's so specific to Drake or Kendrick, like it doesn't really bleed into my regular life. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, which is so interesting about it. And real quick too, I would throw in that same conversation, honorable mention is the, uh, sometimes you gotta pop out and show niggas. You know yes, yeah, oh no, like, like, that's uh, more than, outside of the N word, yeah. like that is again, a similar to they not yeah. like that cause I'm yeah. my identity, yeah. right? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm already thinking about what, Instagram post, I'm gonna use that couch, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say this one, bro. This gotta, this gotta hit. <laughs> But that was that to me was one of the the most interesting parts of the beef, right? Is like because we talked about this off camera, and it was like a lot of things that Kendrick did that you would have expected Drake to do, and mm-hmm. he like and he let Kendrick beat him to the punch. Because usually, coming up with these one liner Instagram caption style mm-hmm. quotables, that's like Drake's move. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. And to your point, like you said, two out of it. Even if we thought hard enough, maybe there's like another four or five that we're missing if we thought hard about it, but it's like, it's, it doesn't amount to the amount that you would expect him to come out mm-hmm. with and doesn't amount to the ones that, like you said, are pretty obvious when it comes to Kendrick. Yes, yes. Like, almost like, I wouldn't say almost, it's like, I wouldn't even say he got beat at his own game because for whatever reason he wasn't playing that game. It's like, you got beat with your own game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I think there's a reason why I do want to address these other ones real quick before okay. I get into that. Like, BBL Drizzy, I think BBL Drizzy is gonna is gonna be a great little tune, right? In terms of the the melody, that's what gives it a lot of power. Maybe when some BBL, you see some BBLs, you might say that, all right. Other than that, I would call it something a little bit weaker. But maybe the prevalence of BBLs might, you know, you might see one and and that might pop in your mind. Uh, drop and give me fifty. I mean, I guess when you like working out. Like there might be some there. They sound a little bro. Somebody, hey, bro, give me, don't give me fifty. Bro. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Like maybe something <laughs> like that. It's not as strong though. The BBL jersey and and dropping give me fifty. I think are both like like just weaker. Um, wop 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 wop. Anytime somebody's like actually like hitting somebody, like so you might be, I don't know, describing what happened in the fight or watching the fight. But but again, outside of that, it's still not as powerful as well. You know what I mean? But it's like, yeah, he got it. <laughs> he got beat. Here's one of the weakest ones. Kendrick just opened his mouth. Someone hand me a Grammy right now. But before I get into that, I got to speak on why I think Kendrick won this the battle of so many phrases. Someone said, someone that had not heard any of the songs yet. They hadn't heard, this is after Euphoria dropped. So they hadn't heard Taylor Made. They hadn't heard uh, uh, Push Ups. And they hadn't heard Euphoria. And I was like, hey, have you listened to any of your songs? They were like, nah. I was like, you should listen to, uh, well, the Euphoria, that's the song we were talking about with somebody else who was in the conversation the moment. I was like, well, yeah, you should check that out. I stopped, just because that's what we were talking about. I'm like, I think you'll like the songs. And they were like, oh, man, is Kendrick using all them funny voices? Because and this is a woman, like, because I love when he does all those voices. And the when that person said it, I was like, that's interesting. And I didn't think too much of it. But as the fight played out, I realized those voices are what makes these things stick. Mm-hmm. And it what allows him to put more of those in a song when he decides to than Drake. Because Drake doesn't really change his tone all that much. Right? It's a battle of styles. Like sometimes your style, just like if you, anybody watch sports, like I could beat Ja'Cory and then Ja'Cory could beat person number three, person number three can beat me. It's just like a bad matchup, yeah. right? Yeah. And when it comes to that side of the game, like when you're singing like the Drake, Drake's like melodic style, it's hard to put a bunch of those in one song where Kendrick like is so sporadic and he's like switching direction so much, it gives him the ability to just like slide a whole bunch of things in. It would like be disruptive for Drake and his music. Like even for me, I didn't like the Dave Freeland, like when I heard it, 
Like I was like, this sounds kind of weird. Like the way he did the day free and he did the the weekend. The, nah, 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 nah. I was like, ah. yeah. and I was, but I was feeling the rest of the song for me, but it was like interruptive because you're like, you're like grooving. You know, you, you like Drake has you in it, like in a bag and you kind of just want to stay in that bag. Yeah. Kendrick, you're more just like listening. All right, what are you going to do? Where, where are you going with it? So like for those of y'all who have an animated style, you know, that's something that's going to be beneficial to you. I'm going to help you make things stick. But I think that's a huge part because it wasn't just saying it in the voice. He was changing how he said it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which made you pay attention to it harder. Which made you pay attention to it harder. Mm-hmm. It stuck out. And then now, like, again, like, people aren't just saying, you don't want to work with me or more. Okay, then I did do one. You don't want to work with me or more. Like, they're doing the voice <laughs> along with it, right? So, like, these things stick in your mind. Um, but that's why I think he uh, won that battle, which I would not have foreseen ahead of time, but it just, I'm paying attention to it in a whole another way. I was just, I, I was just learning watching this whole uh, situation. It was actually, it was fascinating for real. Then, Kendrick just tried to open his mouth. Someone had someone had um, him a Grammy right now or whatever. The problem with this bar, and I'll skip to this part, like, because I was going to talk about this later. I learned this from watching politics, and a lot of this whole thing is political. Political has moved more to, like, marketing-like artists, and artists are moving, and especially in the beef, you realize, oh, they need a market-like politicians. Yeah. Donald Trump, when he hit the game, he disrupted like politics and their marketing because he was marketing like, you know, an influencer or something, right? A media person. And one of the things he would do from a more battle rap side was insult, 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 insult. That was his thing. And he was really good at making insults stick. And as a response, other politician who that wasn't uh, that wasn't their game. Hillary Clinton was the first. Well, I want to say the first, but like the first, like in terms of the first cycle. And he would call her like Crooked Hillary. I forgot. There's a couple other things. Hillary would say stuff that just would not stick. And one of them, I wish I could remember the phrase, like included Trump in it. And it could be misconstrued almost as bigging him up in some ways. It doesn't, it didn't land that way. And this same thing stuck, but stuck out to me for that same reason immediately. Whereas like, Kendrick just opened his mouth, give him a Grammy right now. You're saying it with sarcasm and as an insult, right? But the moment Kendrick just gets a Grammy, he can also use that as like, this is praise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? So you, and you, so it's like you gave him praise in a bar that you meant to be sarcastic and just strategically the battle of communication and how these wars work, right? That's a misstep. Now, I, I know, I, again, I know exactly what you were doing. Drake is full of, in this battle, of I know what you were doing, but I also know this is why it's not going to work like you want it to work, right? It's like these, a whole bunch of missteps with things like that, where it's like easily flippable, or even though we know what you're saying, you shouldn't have said it like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a big one, and especially for people who in, in, in battle rapping or you're trying to, in your battle of trying to ruin brands, you do not want to create an insult that really isn't an insult. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it just, that's how I can't say it any more simply than that. All right, I got to interrupt really quickly, not for a commercial, but a few key points I want to add to this episode that we want to make sure that we get in because again, we want this to be just a document that people can look back at in the future and observe for themselves. So here's a couple things. Number one, Drake was really busy during this time. Not only had he been moving around on tour a lot of this time, he also had multiple beefs, multiple people coming at him, but also he had been going through this ongoing beef with The Weeknd and his team. So Drake was distracted, right? He had business as well, right? If you look at his situation versus Kendrick, which we do touch on a little bit, right? he had a lot more commercial business that he engages in that takes more of his time than the Kendrick. So when you look at this, you know, you want the lesson here is you want minimal distraction when it comes to engaging in a beef, especially with a formidable opponent. Another thing is some of the lies or pieces of information that you reveal can have different types of impact. So in this case, the daughter, a lot of people 
talk about the daughter as if that was like a smoking gun or that was supposed to be the reason that Kendrick won. But the reality is most people don't really care that much about the daughter. Um, nowhere near as much of the impact that it had the first time around when Drake was battling Pusha T. But what we did see is that news was great in distracting from Family Matters, right? So Kendrick drops Meet the Grams after Family Matters, right? And one, you're stepping on a track just because he dropped in general. Whoa, he Kendrick dropped that shortly after me, uh, Family Matters? That already is a story. But then to add the story of there being another child potentially hidden, it doesn't have long-term impact in terms of people caring about the ultimate outcome of the beef, but it do, does do a great job at distracting yet again from what Family Matters brought to the table as well, particularly in the short term. So again, some of the information have has different functions. And that's something to be aware of when you're in a battle like this, if we're playing the full PR perception game. It doesn't always have to be this haymaker is going to knock them out or is going to be humiliating or embarrassing. It could just be distracting from whatever you're trying to distract from. Last thing I want to mention is Kendrick did something that was strategically amazing, which was isolating Drake from his resources. How did he isolate Drake from his resources? Well, there's three primary examples. Number one, you got oh, you got your style from Lil Baby or Future or 21 Savage. He mentioned all these Atlanta rappers, which took them off of the table in many ways. Not saying they would have collabed with Drake, but it created this perception where if any of those rappers wanted to come to Drake's defense through a tweet, if he any of those rappers wanted to do a collab, they would have to think about that, right? Do I want to get involved in this? So he isolated the Drake from those relationships, right? And called out the Atlanta colonization, in his own words, that also made Drake have to think about take, making that move, right? Another way that um, Kendrick did this was a very America versus Canada style of thing um, approach. He also did a black versus not black culture, not black race, but black culture, black American culture separation, all right? He even did a moral separation where some people had to decide well if i do i want to be on the side of somebody who acts like drake versus this guy who acts like kendrick because he took some holier than thou, thou stances right to be fair you know like is kendrick holier than thou actually not necessarily but a lot of people's retort to that was well kendrick uh is open about him not being perfect which he gave himself a strong positioning um in before the battle that's something to think about right before the battle what is your positioning he put himself in a strong position just by not acting perfect. So he separated Drake in those multiple ways. Here's another way that he separated from some resources. He said, LeBron keep the family away. Curry keep the family away. LeBron James, Stephen Curry, basketball players, celebrities who help when it comes to Drake's brand equity in, in terms of being positioned next to him. Him saying that, again, gives those celebrities who want their brands to be clean, it actually gives them something to think about. Do I want to be seen with Drake in this time where I'm already adding these uh, pedo allegations attached to his name? Boy, it's really, like, it's really making people think about their involvement with Drake, right? So separating himself from those resources, siphoning that away from him, when that's a lot of what he brings to the table, right? A lot of his strength when it comes to um, being more of a popular celebrity type figure as he's pursued, those are some of the advantages that he comes with. The brand perception and having powerful people on his side. So to take away the public uh, support that's able to happen or making those people think twice actually, again, works to Kendrick's advantage. And it's just another thing to think about strategically. Uh, but it's been amazing to watch back to the episode and all the other points that we're making. Now let's transition into the fact that we have not seen artists that are this big ever battle. Yep, ever. Right? Crazy. We can start with Drake because I think Drake is the most obvious. Like, literally, we have not seen anybody that is in a rap battle that is actually a corporate darling. He is a pop act. So that alone is what changes it. Drake is a pop act. We have not seen a pop act in a rap battle. 
Yeah, facts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like that alone makes him the biggest person to ever be in a rap battle, period. Kendrick, why is, so why is he number two? Because Drake being a pop act makes it way bigger. Like rap wasn't even big enough to be like legitimate bop, pop acts. Dr- rap was still trying to win rap o- or pop over as a genre. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like back in those days. So again, like that's why Drake is clearly that. So why is Kendrick like number two? Why is he number two? I think what that comes for from is the fact that it wasn't earlier in his career. It's when he's near 40. So he had time to build more, right? If, not that he wasn't popping and big in his generation, right? But it's like if Jay-Z had a battle at 30 versus if Jay-Z had a battle at 40, mm-hmm. right? Which these are also the oldest dudes who, <laughs> in terms of this level of you're number one hey, yeah, and y'all are y'all are beefing up, right? I didn't even think about that. Yeah, That's a good point. Which, is, which is a whole other. So this <laughs> creates like these unique elements. Like, because Kendrick has done songs with Taylor Swift, which I'm still surprised that he never flipped that that on Drake because Drake did a commercial to the Taylor Swift and Kendrick Lamar song where he was doing like this corny workout yeah, thing or whatever. That. that was like, it was supposed <laughs> to be a cheesy commercial. Don't be offended for those who were like, oh, why are you talking about Drake corny? It was, the whole idea was to be corny and cheesy in that commercial. Yeah. But I'm surprised Kendrick never flipped that. But but yeah, just because uh, Kendrick's mature, uh, career is more mature, so both of their careers are far more mature than any other big beef that's happened in the past. You just mentioned that 50 was about coming on the scene still yeah. when he toppled Ja Rule in that way. And then Jay-Z and Nas were still relatively early. Nas was farther along than Jay. But there was a lot more growth that could could be had. Yeah. So that's what why Kendrick just ends up being a number two in, um, in this regard. But that creates completely different implications. Mm-hmm. And things that can be said, things that can't be said, like for Drake especially. Like Drake got pinned up, if we want to be honest. Like it, by many many people's analysis, Drake had lost pretty much when They Not Like Us dropped. Yeah. All right. Pretty much the like the final nail in the people, A lot of people were saying it's over. I was like, I gotta hear what Drake responds. I gotta at least give him a chance to respond, but you know. A lot of people like already they not they not like us hit hard enough for people to actually feel that way and on a high level, right? And and communicate on a high level. I was like, all right, I still need to hear what Drake says, but I mean, this is pretty. This is gonna be pretty tough because I don't know what you can d- say. Drake responds to hard part six. I don't understand how there's people who don't see it as a white flag, and I feel like people who say they're Drake fans, uh, if you want to be in a fanboy, I'm supposed to really support you. You actually should not want to look at that as any other thing than a white flag, and want and you should not want Drake to continue. Here's why. At this point, we're talking about the idea of Drake being called a pedo. You know what I'm saying? That, if I'm on a corporate level, that shakes the room heavily. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's bigger than this battle. It's like, all right, yeah, I like this idea of winning over the culture and being the number one rapper. That is something I truly do care about um, and being better than Kendrick. But to the point it's affecting my real life and the business that I could continue to do, if this battle never happened, I would have just been good. It's not like my life would have been ruined. I need to more so protect that instead of continuing to fuel the possibility of this message being spread more, repeated more than it already is going to be at this point, especially after they not like us, like really pin those messages in a catchy way. Mm-hmm. All right. So like to me, strategically, there's a moment of realizing, ah, what is this battle worth to me? Yep. And I was like, eh, it doesn't really make sense to actually continue this battle. So if we talk about, an unfair advantage and everybody should be looking for their unfair advantages in battle. So like, I don't even mean this in like a soft, Oh, that's unfair way. Like that particular message. All right. Pinned him down. Like we can argue that, well, Drake might've responded and Kendrick might've responded and maybe they went on for another week and maybe Kendrick still would have quote unquote won the culture or whatever. But Drake had to stop right then or the smart move. Cause let's say he might still continue. Maybe he dropped something tonight. Who knows? But like the smart move at that point just becomes, ah, okay, you got me. F it. You know what I'm saying? I need to just go get on this track, refute those bars, say that you're a liar, 
and you're wrong. And this is more for my corporate sponsors to hear me refute this message than anything, yeah. right? Because that's affecting my life in a real way. There's a lot of money on the line and literally a day or two from the heart, part, uh, the heart part six dropping, there's a drop of my Nike shoe. I am because of exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you want to think like, oh, none of that co- uh, stuff was real in terms of, you know, maybe some of the people behind the scenes saying, "Hey, chill out, bro." You think Nike liked when we dropped the Drake shoe and a bunch of people are in the comments saying Ovi Ho? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Pedo and all this stuff, like A minor, all just all in the comments. That was what was happening. Yeah. So, like, this is what it looks like when you're Kevin Hart versus Cat Williams. And that's my comparison. Why I say that, like some people like to say, "Oh, Cat Williams is way funnier than <clears throat> Kevin Hart and more raw than Kevin Hart." Da da da. Um, and Kendrick will be uh, Cat Williams in this particular battle, right? Drake would be Kevin Hart. I say again, unfair advantage because a Kevin Hart and a Drake are more corporate; they're more commercial. Mm-hmm. So you not you know what you're not going to see if Kevin Hart had to go head to head with a Cat Williams. Kevin Hart can't say stuff as edgy. He can go only go but so far. Yeah. Because he, <laughs> he's depending on stuff. Yeah. And you know what people are going to say? Oh, uh, Well, he was like, dang, well, Cat Williams is more edgy. He's more funny because he's saying wilder stuff. He's more un- uninhibited. You seem a little bit more buttoned up. Like, you are in an unfair position in terms of what you can actually do if you're trying to maintain your current lifestyle. You could say, hey, for the sake of this, I'm just going to risk it all and then say whatever you want to say, approach it however you want to approach it. But this is the type of element that is existing in this battle. And again, for those people who are watching this documentation of this battle, the analysis of how we're breaking this down, that might let you know, yo, if I'm in that type of position, I'm playing that type of game. If anybody who don't got nothing to lose. You know how they say, I don't want to date nobody who don't have nothing to lose or I don't want to deal with nobody who don't have anything to lose. Not that Kendrick has nothing to lose, but the things that you have to lose in a corporate setting is more in that game, right? There are both like cultural games that y'all might have to lose, right? And I think that's another way to think of it as well. There's categories that y'all might be equivalent and what you have to lose but you need to look at the categories where you have something to lose and they don't because that's also probably a vulnerable part that you have you get what i'm saying yeah i agree because i i think you can you can see it from both sides right like if you assume what the other person thought was the biggest thing the other person had to lose drake is assuming kendrick's biggest thing to lose is his family Mm -hmm. that's why he kept attacking family so much kendrick knew drake's biggest thing he could lose is the public mm-hmm. protection he has, the mm-hmm. public perception protection he has. It's like, if I can just get a chink in that armor for people to see through, like, I, I, I won in my eyes, right? Bruce, I'm pretty sure Drake was probably thinking, if I can cause some chaos in his household, yep. him and the wife arguing about these bars, you know what I'm saying, the, the baby mm-hmm. looking at Kendrick funny, you know what I'm saying, like, damn, dad, you let Drake say that, you know what I'm saying? And in his head, it's like, I won. But then, it, like, you think about those two outcomes, one is easier to measure from the public standpoint, and we have to remember this, like this is what it comes down to. It's not about like, internally, Kendra's household could be in shambles right now, and Drake maybe did win because of that, but we'll never see that and we'll never know right. that. Right. But if, if if fucking Nike dropped Drake next week, everybody would know that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and and outside looking in, it would be like, oh, Drake, I mean not Drake, Kendrick definitely won the situation yeah. because we can, we can literally see the impact that this had on you versus Kendrick, we got to make some assumptions. Oh, he been quiet for a while. Maybe he in therapy. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, it's whatever. He's he's doing X, Y, Z. But it's like these aren't things that are, I, I won't say aren't tangible because they technically are, but it's not in the in the mind of the fan. It's like I can't even prove it. It's prove that. So yeah. why waste my energy over there? I'm going to spend it on the things that I can very clearly see. The music catalog, the, the, the way the corporate sponsorships treat you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? The, what the comments say after this and those are the things that end up mattering long term because by the time the artists on the other side can finally piece together the statements or the proof to back their point up is like it's too late you know what i'm saying like the mm-hmm. public has already took their narrative dug into it and are, are now running with it and then you know maybe there was a time where that was easier to get ahead of, you know, back when news cycles were like once a week you know what i'm saying once, <laughs> right. once every two weeks it's like oh if i can just if I can just get this narrative straightened out before the next article of the source comes out, 
Like I'll be okay. Right. 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 Versus I'm now it's trying. like, damn, bro, I have to, I have to, I have to fix this narrative before that 16 year old in Russia wakes up tomorrow and start posting on his meme page. <laughs> <laughs> and it's four o'clock in the morning where I'm at, I'm not going to make it. You right. I mean, shooting, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's sleeping because it's 24 hours really with it. Yeah. See, and that's, so that's a good way of thinking of it because like, what if it was Kendrick versus J. Cole? They both have wives and kids. Yeah, that's that right? was the difference, yeah. Yeah, well, they're two family men. So that's more of an equal play of feel in terms of how they're looking at it, and they're less, a little less corporate. And what? Let's just pretend they both have wives and kids. They're cheating on their wives real bad, and both of them know that they're cheating on their wives real bad, but their wives don't know, or it's not public. And that's a part of their family brands. They're probably both going to start on some other sis. Let's how we let's see, <laughs> let's see if we can beat each other over here. Let's stick with the bars and all this other stuff cuz I know you can say it and I, and I say it. Let's try. <laughs> let's chill out, bro. Let's think about yeah, it. Yeah, we don't want to do that, you know what I'm saying? Because they have something equal to lose and and some equal violations in that space. But when you got again, a lot more of this corporate commercial thing going and I don't have that corporate commercial, I can say certain things and brand it, it just works and plays out so so different and i think that's something that you really have to be aware of and analyze when you're going to get somebody um because i it's too often that people they don't respect that aspect of the game you're looking at the person from the person for the person themselves versus the situation that the person is in versus the situation that you're in as a person and that doesn't mean that drake had a higher position in hip-hop it is not about that this is a big part of what you have to, have to talk about all right um but in terms of how you're moving corporate and how you choose to move, it changes the game, right? Dave Chappelle chose not to have a whole bunch of uh, like TV deals, movie deals. Kevin Hart chose to, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of times people try to, like, this is why people in hip hop look down on some of the ways where people try to say, oh, I got these numbers and I and like Drake has these numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And his fans might make it worse because when you try to stand on those things, it's like, well, there's many people who are choosing not to do that things. Like if you decide to be pop star, that's like a different thing than hip hop star. So we're talking about the hip hop credibility in this battle, which comes to down to being aware of the culture, which again, I'm going to get a little bit deeper into with Drake. As a matter of fact, it's a good, a good time fans drake fans i don't think y'all know how much y- y'all made it worse for drake in this battle um and that's a huge part of how the outcome and i'll say it this way being a pop star all right introduce but you're rooted in hip-hop taylor swift for example started off rooted in country for a little bit yep. flipped it pop star into country uh and just became a pop star all right Molly Cyrus went beyond country, went to pop star, right? And there's certain levels of respect from a core culture that you do and don't have based on how you move in the culture at large. Yep. But you have to first and foremost understand the culture at large and everything you do over there, that don't mean anything over here per se. We can respect it, but don't act like it makes you better than the, the rules that exist here. Yep. It's like when you come over to your mom's house, I don't care if you got your own apartment right now, but the rules in my house are still the rules in my house. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. like, a lot of that lack of awareness in Drake's fan base, I think, um, isn't there. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of Drake's fan base because they came in through the pop aspect of Drake or they came in through Drake just in general, he's their introduction to hip hop. He might've been their first favorite uh, hip hop artist, yeah. right? It's almost like in churches, there's like these, it's like a funnel. There's preachers who call themselves, I forgot where they are. It's almost like the top of the funnel though. I'm treating, uh, I'm, I'm teaching a more diluted message. And the, the primary core church has a problem with those preachers because they're like, well, that's not as biblical or it's like overly optimistic just to give people, um, you know, a sense of this is all good and you're not doing anything wrong. It's too feel good, right? Yeah. But those preachers' argument is, well, I'm converting people, right, who are afraid of that core message. Yeah. I'm I'm the top of the funnel. I'm introducing them and bringing them into God. And I guess you're supposed to leave that church when you become more. <laughs> you say, well, oh, okay, this person's only like kind of, kind of lit, but he really don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's not potent enough for me, so I want to go down the funnel. I guess, 
right? That's how it's supposed to work theoretically. Um, like that's what it looks like coming through a Drake, somebody who's positioned as a as a pop star. And the thing that I saw repeatedly is people misjudging the things on that side, outside of the, the circle, as things that matter in the circle. And even Drake did it a little bit, but I saw, I think Drake did a good job at like moving off that relatively quickly in terms of the bars of the number ones and things like that, seeing that that didn't matter because it doesn't matter. And you're actually supposed to have those numbers if you tr start to make those pop choices. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone chooses to make those pop choices and they playing themselves and they don't get the numbers, that's when people start looking at you real funny. But Kendrick has never been looked at somebody who's pursued that heavily. So you can't really use that against them. And, and he flipped it in the beef. He actually did take it in the musical accolade direction, but a different direction, right? Because he clowned Drake for not having an album that's considered a classic in the rap space. And that, and see, this is where he said your core fans, and then Kendrick, Kendrick multiple times tried to separate culture mm -hmm. um, from Drake, which there's just a big reality of, again, you would see online, and this isn't all Drake fans, by the way, so I know like some of y'all are like, oh, what you mean? I made it hard for Drake. There's a, y'all should be aware. Start looking around you and some of these people online. There is a huge amount of fans in Drake's fan base because of where they're coming from that don't understand what Drake actually himself understands to a pretty good ex extent of what matters in hip hop. Yep. Right. It's just a different thing. So that alone, like when you see all these arguments that have nothing to do with the core core culture outside of, of, um, of that, you start to make people start saying like, who are just indifferent, start to say, eh, I don't know if I want to be on the same side as this person right yeah, here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm looking at Drake different because the way what you're saying and what you look like. And it's like, if people are arguing about money, right. And then your perception of this guy is like, Oh, he's super broke. You see that he don't have a job and he's looking dusty. He doesn't get any woman. Da, 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 da. And now you're like, dang, he just repeated the same argument that I did. Maybe I'm <laughs> maybe I'm doing something wrong. Matter of fact, we just watched a video like that. A girl saying the same thing. Yeah. She said, I never argued that someone couldn't say the N-word before. Maybe I'm maybe I'm on the wrong side of history because I never had to argue why a black person should be able to say. And then she came to her own conclusion, right? Yeah. And, but, and she said she was a she used the term Drake sexual. Like I never <laughs> I never heard that so term before. But she said that's what like that's how deep of a fan she was of Drake. And <laughs> hearing some of the things and the arguments made her rethink how she saw things. And that stuff went far beyond the bars uh, in this battle. It was a lot that happened beyond the bars. So understanding your position, my audience, my like you got to understand what the core culture is. That's what matters. And any of y'all who don't understand the core culture in this competition, you just need to watch. Period. You're making it worse. You think you are not. But you need to watch. And I know you might feel like, well, I like Drake and I like some other rappers. All right. But trust me. Just learn. I say I've said this on Twitter. Look. I like Burner Boy. I like like David O. I like uh, WizKid. And, you know, they got a little bit of beef going on themselves or whatever. If there became a legitimate battle where it was just straight music. Cause most of the stuff I hear from them is more like some personal beat. Yeah. It's not, it's less of fans. <laughs> like who's the best out, out of them for real, for real. real shit. But if it really became a music, music thing, I've been rocking with Avril Beach for probably like 10 years now. I am also black. All right. Africans are seen as black. However, my opinion don't matter in that damn conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, I did not grow up in that core part of the culture. Yeah. I have a very adjacent uh, positioning. So I, I understand a lot of it It's more accessible and I have a higher appreciation for it. But my opinion does not matter in Afro beats. It just doesn't. I have that self-awareness and there's a lot of fans in this conversation that don't realize their opinion does not matter in hip hop. Even if you are black, but are you, the hip hop type of black. And it doesn't even mean, I mean you have to be black, like just to have a pen. Cause there's, there's some other cultures, especially obviously um, being rooted in New York. There's a lot of Hispanics. Um, um, and there's even white people legitimately who have um, opinions that do matter within hip hop. But it's a lot more nuanced than do I like 
any rappers. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I get what you're saying. Cause it's like the equivalent of like buying a pair of shoes that you think are cool and then you see like the lame kid in school with them on and you start rethinking like, damn man, either I'm not either I'm not cool and I thought I was and you know, we made the same uncool decision <laughs> or <laughs> Bro's about to step over here and, and and fuck the whole game up and make them uncool. And it's the same thing because it's something. Yes. I, it's something yeah. I don't think. Oh, hold up, hold up. That's, that's what you said. That was important. Yeah. Not bros leveling up and he's yeah. about to be cool. <laughs> no, he's about to make it uncool. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's about to come over here and mess it up. But everybody just bought these shoes, bro. All of us down a hundred dollars, bro. <laughs> and I think that's something artists don't think about, right? Is like when you're in this type of situation, especially when the beef, not even just a beef, but just say any type of artistic conversation ele elevates to the point so where your fans feel like they have to be vocal enough to speak up for you. As the artist, right, you're not going, more than likely you're not gonna be speaking on every little thing every single day. That's that's typically the role of the fan base. That's, that's the, the fan, you are meant to give the bigger points the bigger fruit from the tree, the fans are meant to pick the seeds up and run with it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they grow whatever they grow. Which sounds like a good thing until you realize that means that 80 to 90% of the time, the duration of this moment, your fan base is your representation of you in a way that they they typically, they, they usually aren't like they are in most cases, but like it's not as heavily scrutinized from the outside looking in until it's like a moment of war, a moment of like clear public separation. And now people are, judging you by the people that are speaking up for you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's yep. like, oh shit, like, you know, it's like, oh, all the Drake fans are like, you know, and not saying that this is necessarily true, but one of the discords I was seeing was like, man, all the Drake fans that are taking up from are like teenagers. Like these are kids that haven't even been around long enough to make the discernment of like what's good and what's not good. And whether or not that is true, for a period of time that was the most vocal part of his fan base on the internet. So that is what a large part of people have come to now see as the face of his of the base or the face of his base in the in the argument and like like i said it's it's only so much of that you can control anyway because you're gonna you're gonna put your message out and your message resonates with who it resonates with and it riles up who it riles up but you do i do think it's the job of the artist to tailor their message in a way that it activates the right side of their fan base mm. you know what i'm saying because like, let's, like let's like let's look at a hypothetical right let's say like one of drake's big comebacks was like, hey, I can say the N-word, right? Now, it would have hit differently if, let's say, me and 20 other black Drake fans was like, yeah, Drake can say the N-word, he's whatever, whatever, whatever. You might be like, okay, whatever. Let's say Drake's 16-year-old white fans came out and said he could say it. Man, he's different. And that's kind of like, hmm, I don't know, bro. I don't know if you have the right credential. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To be giving out the kind of pass yeah. that you're giving out. And even if you feel like you do, the rest of the community doesn't feel that way, so therefore your your past is null and void. You know, and that's a lot of what we saw going on here is like, hey, like some of the messages from both sides could be fair, you know what I'm saying, could have had some validity to it, but the vessels that they were being spoken through weakened the message or made people just outright not pay attention to it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's the same situation. Hey, the lame kid got some important shit to say. We still don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> we still don't yeah, hear that Yeah, and I think Kendrick, leaned into that or it was just a, mm -hmm. a byproduct of the fact that a lot of the things that Kendrick said or one of the primary critiques was a black specific conversation yep right and once you make that argument it immediately becomes a black conversation yep like there's only but so much people from the outside of that can have and and again whatever whoever is battling or using this for yourself in the future that just it means culture. Yeah. All right. And culture you can insert through. culture. Like what culture, what conversation is very specific to the the relevant conversation at the moment and that might actually scapegoat or separate you from the other person or cut off the relevance of some of that other person's fan base. All right. Yeah. Because Drake yeah. has black fans. Yeah. Kendrick is big enough. He has many fans that could not be in that conversation as well. Right, Kendrick has white fans. Kendrick has people, fans who are into some pop stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. But once he brought up that conversation, he cut up a huge part of of Drake's fan base. And once you you saw that clearly by people misconstruing that conversation, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, this is a racist conversation. Drake, well, no, that Drake was talking about Rick Ross and that, that particular thing. So I'll, I'll leave that that alone. Um, 
because Rick Ross was just blatant brash and and, <laughs> and simplistic in what he was saying about Drake. Um, <laughs> but the um, that conversation being a legitimately nuanced thing and it not being a new conversation mm-hmm. is something that black people are already very, 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 very much so aware of. When you hear somebody misconstrue it, it just comes off as dis- disingenuous or you completely do not belong like mm-hmm. here. Like yeah. you have no relevance to the conversation and then it starts to be by um byproduct of that the battle itself like you have no you have no merit your 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 ideas have no merit in this battle it starts to become that by default and that separation became genius in a, in a way and i don't again that was a legitimate critique that had been ha- uh, that people had about drake for a minute so i don't want to say in all ways kendrick like just masterminded it he just brought up a critique that had been shared about Drake before and it happened to scapegoat or cut off a lot of his audience. Yeah, and I think it, it's interesting too, man, because like, like I said, when the first Drake fan base attack came up, it was like, oh, Drake's fan bases are just a bunch of teenage white kids. Me, you know, 31-year-old black male was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? I like Drake. Yeah, it's like, I like it's like, I'm like I like Drake, but it's like, like you said, but it's like, I'm not the most vocal part of his fan base. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And the, the ones that look like me like that side of fan base, I, I ain't the one that's about to be in DJ Academics comments arguing back and forth. So it's mm-hmm. like, are, do we exist? Yes. Are yep. we vocal and on the front lines like they are? No. And that goes back to the boy point. I was, the first one I was making, your soldiers on the front line are what mold your perception during the battle. You know what I'm saying? If 100%. I see your front line as a bunch of strong looking individuals, I'm gonna be like, oh no, that's a that's an army I don't want to fuck with. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? The, your front line look weak and frail. It's like, oh yeah, no, this is this, this over with, bro. We we it's easy. And I had a, a real life situation that made me think about it, right? So I, I was in LA the day Not Like Us came out. Like I landed in LA in like a couple hours it came out. And I had a homie I was out there hanging out with and he's not in music at all, he works in finance. Like he's just, you know, guy with a, a good job, you know, nice straightforward path, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, benefits, all that stuff. And he was getting off work when I got there and he was like, man, this whole beef thing is crazy. Like my boss was talking to me about it. And I was like, well, he said, yeah, my boss, like she's like a, 60 year old white woman who came mm-hmm. up to me before I left was like, hey, yep. I, mean, I don't want to say his name, but hey, you know, you, before you go home, like, who you got in this Drake and Kendra beef? And he said, he was like, yep. Like, what? Like, what you talking about? She was like, Preston, I think Drake, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Kendrick is kind of like, whatever, whatever. And he and he said to me, he was like, Brian, a lot of you, I don't like my boss. And hearing her say that she was on Drake's side, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> kind of got me swinging Kendrick well a little bit more. Like, he said, like, he said, if nothing else, just so I have a, a I have a point of contingency with her now. Every time I have a, I have a valid reason to be frustrated with her now when I see her, and I, and, and I can get it off in, in the discourse of this beef. <laughs> and I was like, the main thing about that, bro, you know what I'm saying? It's interesting, like, because I was like, so were you swayed either way before? He's like, nah. I mean, at that point, because like I said, not like us had just came out, so it was like we were sitting on it, but like you didn't. You, I, I feel like you didn't really realize the magnitude of it until like a day or two later. Look, he was giving a battle cry. Yeah. Now he can say <laughs> not like us to his boss. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like yeah. I can imagine when he went back to work, bro. Like the conversation probably changed, but I was like, man, that showed me two things. Because to your point, right? It's like it made me think about that. I was like, man, Dr- Kendrick threw the pop star allegation at Drake, and it stuck. And I was like. But a smart music fan would look at that and be like, y'all are both in the same position. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if Drake is here on pop, Kendrick ain't too far behind him, bro. Kendrick no. Can... What? No. Bro, come on, bro. No. Drake, attitude-wise, far off. Career, movement, they're not too far off, bro. No, I disagree. <laughs> Here's why. I think Drake's miles ahead of uh, Kendrick when it comes to pop. And that's for better or worse. There are some better there's also some worse, right? When it comes to this cultural conversation that creates just like some more worse um, than not. But Kendrick was able to get that far, but stay true to some of the most purest elements that, you know, even many of our generation don't even necessarily care about. He reached back and stayed pure to some of the old <laughs> elements and then the the next generation's elements of hip hop. And then did a lot of it on a pop level using more so features of some of the some of the like like more singers and things like that like oh i'm working with a scissor i'm working with a um like a taylor here um i think that was just like a one-off whatever and then but most of it was just traditional like rap that he did drake legitimately made 
pop music, pop music. Yeah. Right. Like, like specifically, strategically, and again, that's one of those things where we make we all choose the life we want to we want to live, right? Or at least try to, yeah. right? And that's there's some people who want to become a billionaire. There's some people who are like I'm cool being a millionaire. There's some people who say I want to you know, have maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars and I'll be cool. Mm-hmm. Drake wanted to pursue the pop pop star route. And that's great when you're winning and you actually start to achieve at that game. But then if you start to, in, you know, you end up in a position where for whatever reason you have to fight like this, that just comes with, again, some things that work against you, et cetera. Yeah. Kendrick didn't pursue and say, I wanted to be the big pop star. He, he was not, you don't see Kendrick beefing with Taylor Swift. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you're trying to be bigger than Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like, that's just a thing he chose. And again, there's pros and cons to that, but that's just the reality of it. And like, he had, Drake has a lot of pure non-hip-hop songs, you know, but he just gets, yeah, his core true. identity, people look at him as, is a rapper, because that's how he entered the game. Yeah. Right? But he's very Post Malone in that. And he in still that stays, he, he makes sure to stay, stay close present, to it. Yeah. Because he knows that that's the culture that matters. Yeah. Right? And he doesn't have the, and this is the thing, this is where we play off of the fact that Drake is mixed and he has and he does care about some hip hop culture and credibility. Let's just call it his black side, quote unquote, however you want to, you know, like um simplify it to. But Post Malone could do the same things that Drake did and not be present in black culture. And he doesn't have to worry about like, oh, let me still like try to stay relevant on that side of the game. Mm -hmm. That's not something that he has to struggle with, with Drake. You see the struggles of, well, I still want to be relevant in that side of the game as well. I care about that side of the game as well. All right. And it just, again, it, you know, it's not to be an apologist for Drake, but it's just also, you know, some of the reality does seem that he does struggle with. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And again, that creates vulnerabilities. And the, uh, the vulnerabilities got surgically <laughs> cut through in this particular battle. That's just what it looked like. So again, understanding what your vulnerabilities in battle, um, just t- to turn that into a lesson, is a, a, a big thing, a relevant thing. I do want to go to the next point, though. <sighs> Some things that we learned from this battle, like in terms of just specific to today that we couldn't have seen before. TikTok. No, yeah, social in general voice of the people you know but tiktok i'm gonna go with tiktok and of course twitter man the ability for people to dissect lyrics there's a huge knowledge base now called the internet where you have a music teacher you have a social studies teacher you have somebody who's in the streets you got somebody who maybe have gone to this country and you have all these people analyzing so they can understand your lyrics there's somebody who the lyric hit like i missed these two lines but jacory caught that line because he watched that show and i didn't watch that show mm-hmm. right and these people are all able to explain so normally i might just be judging by what i can get with for an extended period of time and slowly learn some of the bars over time over the years and i'm like oh i never even knew that song that meant that yeah. right but now there's this hyperbolic chamber where people are instantly like starting to understand 90 percent a hundred percent of the song almost if the bars are that deep without even having to try they just go on social media and they're like oh well let me like, scroll because everybody's described i found myself shoot let me learn some more of what the bars i'm just gonna hop on tiktok <laughs> and scroll 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 that changed the entire dynamic where i think if kendrick rapped like he rapped and drake rapped like he rapped if it wasn't for tiktok Twitter, I don't know if Kendrick would have been ranked this high because people just wouldn't have got it. Mm-hmm. Like, so you were now Kendrick did also follow one of my other rules that I learned watching this is uh today. What I say, I've said it plenty of times now. You can have a triple quintuple entendre, but if that first entendre don't slap, the rest don't matter. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, again, that goes for like 50% of the song. Like most of your entendres need to hit. And then there could be a triple double meaning. It's like, oh, oh, oh. But if there's no first O, oh, eh. So I don't need a whole song where I need to understand the rest of the song just for any of it to slap. Yeah. For it to be some of it, cool. And for some of them to hit, great. Like I it still has to capture you. So he was able to make enough hit 
immediately, but then give you this well to dig through. And you, man, like you start to appreciate the song more and more. And that's what I saw huge too, like um, from this battle. Kendrick, I want to say Kendrick individually, he was the vehicle for it, but there's other artists that rap in some of these styles. But I think social media exposed what well, Kendrick style plus a social media era exposed a new type of replay value where a lot of people are like, oh, this, there's no replay value to Euphoria. Well, man, Euphoria doing, is doing a lot more than Family Matters. You know, Euphoria is doing more than push-ups, you know, and well, you know, it was it not like us is doing numbers, but that's supposed to do that. That's that's yeah, as simple. That one. But even still, <laughs> even that's probably being listened to before more than it would because of the same reason people are starting to dissect so many of Kendrick's lines that you look, you got to go back to listen to the song again. It's like, dang, Shakori said it means that. Let me go listen to it, see if I catch it this time. And now I'm remembering more of the song as I go back through it. And I'm liking more of the song again as I go back through it. And I'm learning over and over again. You get to have that same experience where I listen to it as a kid and I listen to an adult. You get to have that same maturation, like, except in a short period of time. (laughs) <laughs> for that same reason so he unlocked his replay value where people are literally listening a billion times just to see if they understand more or you get it plus social media explaining stuff and now you're listening back just to hear what you explained in context that alone forces you to go back just to be, uh, better understand we've seen this on social media as well where like someone might do something really quickly like you add a twist to the video now you want to watch the video back just to catch the twist now that you know what's going to happen see if you missed any of the clues along the way or um I'm trying to think of an example someone would say something like did you see the x in the video All right and now you're watching looking for the x yeah. you know what i mean yeah. or you'll read the comments and and someone will say man how come nobody's talking about the dude in the background and then you go watch the video to see the dude in the background All right that was happening with the songs because again, it is just content at the end of the day, and we, we want to look at it that way. Yeah. All right. Music is content, so now people are going back and to shit to see exactly what they missed. That again, I think social media is a big part of that. That couldn't have happened before, but that gave Kendrick an advantage that could not have been foreseen before. It would have been a lot more even, like from a lyrical pers- uh, perspective. Even if you got the rapidly rap people, like. Well, I don't even say rapidly rap people. The real rappers who might catch more of that type of stuff, like immediately, all right, you would have had those people, but it wouldn't have had, there wouldn't have been the same amount of people that would have been able to appreciate the what Kendrick was doing if it wasn't for social media. Yeah, I agree. And like, even to have the information, because the, the first line that I think of thinking about that is, um, they're like, I'm out in Tokyo and Japan or something, and then the internet pieced it together to being Future's assistant or something like that. Right. That's information, but this beef had happened 15, 20 years ago. We wouldn't have learned about that until, like, the documentary came out. And yep. we've been like, oh, shit, that's what he was. But so I agree. It's like not only is there more people paying attention from a cultural standpoint to provide information, right? It's like having real-time translators as, as the message Real-time translators. Yeah. So it's like, in real time, oh, that's what he meant. That's what he meant. This is yep. the information that's coming from. And so it's like, we live in a time where the general public can piece together the information. We live in a time where the information itself, like the pieces of the puzzle are active and out and about and doing things. They can be traced back to in, in an easier way. And it's like, yeah, it's literally like, this is the first time I think we've seen how the information age can affect a beef, right? Because it's not only, um, I think some people look at it like, oh, it's powerful because of the ability of each artist to, I guess, to move uh, misinformation, right? It's easier to move misinformation, but it's also easier for the public to verify information in general. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like points of the beef become stronger now than, than they, they you know may have initially started and to your point, it reaches a level that we won't expect it to have reached for months, sometimes years, in a matter of days. You know what I'm saying? Because yes. it's like the song come out on Friday. By Monday, somebody went down the rabbit hole and, and broke down every song and, and, and Instagram follow and like and with mm-hmm. proof. 
to to guide back to the point, it's just like we've literally never lived in a time of history where, where let alone people mm. care. One, where people care to do that, because we have to bring it up too. This is the first time in social well, in history where people fans even care to be involved in that way. But yeah. then also the first time where they could even do that. You know what I'm saying? One hundred percent crazy. One hundred percent. And like you mentioned, the Tokyo bar, yeah, like that was a Drake bar. So I do want to mention that this is something that happened with Drake as well. Yeah, it's just that Kendrick had so some more more so, of yeah. it. But for people who don't know Kendrick and follow Kendrick because you might be a Drake fan and like, I never listen to Kendrick. Y'all should know, again, Kendrick had an unfair advantage in that category because Kendrick had a reputation for doing that. Yeah. So you had his, some of his core fans already looking out for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, one, Kendrick does go deeper into the entendres. That's why Drake kind of like made fun of him. Yeah, go do one of those because he's known for that. Like Drake knows that he does that and Drake just doesn't do it to that level. But the fact you have your fans that are used to piecing, I remember piecing that together. I remember like all the stuff around the damn album and I was like, bro, I don't even care. I don't want to listen to all that stuff. So I, I understand how some people could be like, I don't want to hear all that in the beat yeah, like, yeah. and not get caught up. I get it, right? <laughs> but it's just like that in terms of what that does for you on the internet, now you have new people coming in and they're like, oh my gosh, this is genius. And now they're trying to like dissect all the bars. So you had a lot more of the Kendrick fans that didn't matter as much in the cultural conversation that did get to stand in the and, and provide value in the what is he saying conversation, yeah. Yeah. right? And that's, again, something that worked in Drake's favor. Fact checking, quick example. When Kendrick did the A minor thing, now all of a sudden you have music theory people saying, oh, well, there's no, uh, what they say, A minor is only white keys. There's no black keys. Oh, that's a Drake shot. Um, then he held the, somebody say he held the A minor phrase as a minor key, but he couldn't have, for whatever reason, they said he wasn't going to be able to do it in A minor or whatever. But they also said um, in like that, like no, not like us, he said up the score on people. Meet the Grams was done in A minor and then Not Like Us was done in B major. All right. So he up he literally upped the score. So that was an entendre within itself. Uh they and they went through all these different obviously I didn't even mention the the obvious like the double entendre between, you know, a minor and the, oh, yeah. the key A minor yeah. could strike in the court. Like, but there's so many things and music theory people were able to touch on this. And why am I saying this in particular? One I wouldn't have known. I know most people were, were going to know about the no white, uh, no black keys, and all these other things in terms of A minor. If those people weren't able to speak, like we have a voice, you just gave us a voice. You excited these communities because you used this knowledge, this arcane to most people, but it really strikes that core. I saw the same argument on Joe Budden on podcast, and, and this goes into the other thing. Drake flips the bar, and he says like B sharp and D major, right? And I saw some music theory people respond to this. They're like, bruh, no B sharp. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have been able to catch yeah. the A minor bar to the level if it wasn't for the music theory people. Yeah. And I wouldn't have known that Drake made a mistake. I caught the flip and I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't think it was like the uh, most amazing flip, but I thought it was pretty cool. And, and then, you know, they're like, nah, bro, there's no B sharp. And this is what made it worse. One girl's, I don't look, I'm not a music theory person, but this girl walks down how not only is there no B, no B sharp, there's all these <sighs> substitutions. I'll just call it that. I could be saying this wrong. But as you go down the path by him saying B sharp, he was technically saying A minor, <laughs> which made it even worse. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you don't get any of this stuff. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You don't get any of this stuff without these other communities that are now able to speak. And that's something that if you want to be in a battle, right, today, like social media and, and beyond, you have to be aware of this stuff, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause this would, like I said, this would have been information that had this beef been 20 years ago, we would have just been getting it now in the dock that would have brought on some like music theory professor from like University of mm -hmm. Chicago or something. All right, in your class yeah. and the rest of the world wouldn't even have found out. <laughs> yeah. But we all on TikTok. Yeah. Matter of fact, and, I, and then I saw on Joe Budden podcast, they were complaining about the same thing. Like, you know, he has like five people there. He had a guest and though, Joe and the other music guy, it was really bothering them that there's no B sharp. <laughs> you know, Joe, there's no B sharp. <laughs> <laughs> 
and the, everybody else was like, no, nah, that don't matter. Uh, y'all doing too, y'all being too picky. It's like, nah, like they just couldn't let it rock. It bothered yeah. them yeah. because there's no B sharp or whatever. It's like, like your point. It's like especially when it's like this is a battle of like who is seemingly telling the the most truth. It's like even a small lock and derail the whole. Especially when it became this whole lie thing, and 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 then. And that made me say, hey, Drake, just play your game, bro. Mm-hmm. I guess you don't know, though. How can you know or think that deep, right? If you're not thinking that deep, you're like, oh, I'm just going to do this little flip. <laughs> but, but He didn't know that he was, I guess, you know. But that's the other point, too, because, like, Kendrick's musicality versus Drake's musicality is, is always brought up in the question. So it's like, to your point, it's like, until you get such a small detail that could really, like, prove who's more musical you really don't know you know what i'm saying it's like yeah if you, it's like, if i don't know your bag yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like i don't know who's more musical in the studio like i'm they're both producing good music i would assume they're both as knowledgeable then you get this one little thing that they can prove this other person is above you slightly above you in it and and like i said and we're talking about oh we said this earlier right like this is a beef where or this was a beef where all things considered were pretty even so even a small edge is is a huge edge in the grand oh, scheme yeah. of things the perception, well, the perception, all things considered, yeah. were pretty even coming into the battle. Yeah, yeah. We knew some obvious, like, oh, well, again, Drake is pops on that side. He has those accolades. Dr- Dr- uh, Kendrick's more, like, true to certain purist elements, so he has more, like, critical acclaim. And he's more artsy in general. But, yeah, things were, perception-wise, we don't know exactly where the gaps yeah. were. And for me, I saw Kendrick and Drake differently, musically, mm-hmm from this battle like it made me think about them more and it reminds me when i remember i used to say this now i haven't said this in a while because i learned but i used to see people like doing the moonwalk i, I watch videos of people dancing i would love watching people uh, da- videos of people dancing i would tell my dad like yo pops like this dude he does the moonwalk as good as michael jackson just about man maybe even better and then i see another video of michael doing the moonwalk and i'm like all right i was tripping <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but it's like objects are bigger than they appear like in, that, in that mirror. So you would have a comparison of a Drake and what his qualities are in Kendrick. But then when they stand next to each other, you can see, oh, man, this guy's a lot taller than this guy over here. Or maybe yeah. in that category, those things that <laughs> things look different. Things look very different. Like, I didn't notice that like, I, I really figured out what Drake's strengths are. And kind of saw a lot more of his weaknesses, uh, but like most importantly, I was like, oh, the the reason that Drake is Drake, I know we say it's the melodies, and we always knew that, but I saw that a lot clearer in terms of what people like, and his beat selection. All right, I saw that a lot clearer. Like people love the Drake beats, the Drake tone, all right, and the Drake flow. Mm-hmm. Those are like the core things, and it's not that Drake can't rap, but he doesn't say some slick stuff. But in terms of like the technical and having more depth, substance, tying more bars in together, like just elements, just like how Kendra was like in eight bars, I'm going to tell you more about it. And he would do it or I'm going to tell you about it. And he like Kendrick has a lot more control from a pure like just writing standpoint. Let's just put it. I'll just say it like that. Right. And understanding of music, you know, on a from a pure like music level. And again, that goes back to the Michael Jackson pimp, uh, on Prince thing. Prince played like 27 instruments or something crazy like that. Michael Jackson didn't really play instruments like that. All right. Doesn't mean Michael Jackson was a genius in his own right, in his own ways, but it made me really see that, okay, yes, Drake can rap, but really Drake's rapping, not saying he can't, but let's just say he don't try. I'm going to just leave it at that. He doesn't attempt to the really rap, 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 right? It's the flow, delivery, like, and the digestibility of all that together in his tone. He has such a unique tone that when he came in the game, a lot of people wanted to sound like that. I remember, like, his voice is like an advantage for him, Mm -hmm. right? Kind of like how a singer is in general. You see it more over there. Well, his tone as an artist, just like Kanye used Jeezy's tone for yeah oh and Jeezy didn't even have a verse his unique voice is actually advantage and some people just love that but sometimes people construe that with the pure like actual rapping ability and musicality and I was able to see Drake's lack of depth in those areas but really 
uh, um, be able to really appreciate that tone that he provided. And it made me realize a lot of times his switch ups are not within rap. His switch ups are going from more so rap or seeing rap to just singing mm -hmm. when he would get into the pop category because he's diverse. But his diversity that he personally displays is not within rap or Kendrick most of his diversity is within the rap box yeah and he doesn't really get into singing i just didn't notice those things so that's something that i also be aware of like what i don't know what is going to be revealed when you stand next to somebody you know what i mean it's nice that you got tim's on but when you stand next to a really tall <laughs> he's like ah, or you take them boots off you know it just it's like all right you're not as tall as tall as i thought yeah i think it says a lot too about what stage you decide to display your talents on, right? Yes. Because to your point, it's like, all right, this is a, a a beef where, yes, both artists have a certain level of pop appeal, but the hip hop community is primarily who's paying attention to the beat. Yes. So it's like, yeah, to your point, it's like some of those things that will make Drake stronger over here, it isn't necessarily going to fly, hit the same when he it's over here. He use all his weapons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like, if I could get more of these people over here, it would hit harder, but these people don't care because it culturally doesn't they make don't sense for them to care. Yeah, they don't. They, yeah, they don't yeah. matter. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it also is also a, a good thing for artists to, to to realize. I think too is like every fan that you have isn't going to be a fan that is culturally attuned to every issue that you have. Right? You mm -hmm. have some fans that just a link with you like that, bro. Everything you care about and you speak about just speaks to them to their core, and they're right there with you. And you got some fans that. Your your struggles, or and I wouldn't say your struggles, but your issues, the things you care about, are just entertainment for them. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's, it's it's just something that's yeah. I I, I like hearing Twenty One Savage rap about being in trouble. I ain't ever going to East Atlanta, but it's cool to hear about. You know what I'm saying? It's it's crazy that that, that bro going through that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. And that's what the reality is. Is a lot of you know every artist has a certain percentage of fan base that is like that. I think Drake's detriment is that a large percentage of his fan base is like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. then you talk about like the bulk of Kendrick's, the bulk of Kendrick's core fan base are also a bulk of the people who will be paying attention to the beef. A bulk of Drake's core fan base are not a bulk of people who will be paying attention to it. Yes, don't even know or care. Yeah. I would talk to people and they wouldn't even know what Drake was going through right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but they're Drake fans. Yeah. Don't even, maybe not even know much about Kendrick. It's like your fan base does not care and some of them aren't even aware. And that makes a big difference in moments like this. And please, for those people who don't have, who are struggling to understand this, know that this is, this is the reality. This is objectivity because it's not even about a shot at Drake in this. When we had this conversation, it's the reality of why in black, uh, black communities, a lot of times people get tagged with sellout so much once they go like pop. Mm -hmm. Why? Because legitimately when you are a minority, right? Becoming bigger at some point means entering the majority. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And obviously hip hop is built out of a minority culture. Right. So now you're going back to the minority. That majority matters less. And, and minority majority. Please hear those are objective or objective terms. Those are numerically <laughs> different. Yeah. Right. So at some point, if you get big enough, that means you're the the outer culture has an opportunity to be bigger than the inner culture. And once once you have that, it just skews maybe how you understand your position within the minority or at least can impact, as we've seen in this battle, the ability for your fans to be able to bring something to the table in a competition competition or conversation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Now, with that being said, another thing that I learned and saw you actually touched on resurfacing of old information. You didn't say it explicitly, but like uh, you touched on it. So I don't, don't want to go too, too deep into it, but we're like talking about how people are breaking some things down. Oh, yeah. I talked about what, what a bar might mean in general, like the music theory stuff, but then also some of that stuff might mean something that was something old that we didn't know yep. about. Right. Yep. But the other side of resurfacing information is there might be accusations in general or just things that relate to the battle that we've seen not Kendrick necessarily pull up or Drake necessarily pull up the fans pull up because they remember those moments yep. right people are tweeting retweeting etc so 
that was a big thing where it's just like, all right, you better know what's back there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You better remember <laughs> your history in the internet because it will get pulled. It, just, it will get pulled. Next thing is the speed of responses. Yep. Because of t- today's era, there's a lot more need for speed. Yeah, bro. All that wait until the album come out. Yeah. Uh, whatever is dead. Yeah, the attention <laughs> fans are too small. Once they say, oh, this is a go, this is a real battle. Yeah, we want this shit now. We want it. Right? Or you losing. I, myself, I, at the beginning of the podcast, I read, hey, yep. bro, Kendrick, like, come on, bro. You take that long, dog. You, <laughs> you at least lost match with number one. Uh, and I think, like, that's a, a good thing. You know, obviously it has, a, it has bad implications in general, but that does allow it to feel a lot more like a live match, yeah. right? Like that allows musically within rap beef to feel more like basketball, football, or whatever because you're having this back and forth. If it takes so long, it's like uh, I'm not even paying attention as much, you know. And I, how are are we supposed to build hype media wise? And I think this is also going to relate towards to like Drake responding or not, why he should or, or should not. Outside of the fact that I don't think he should, just from his business. And life beyond this battle. This battle is not his life, um, per se. Um, but also the timing matters so much. We had an increase and a peak of the battle. The peak of the battle was the week Euphoria came out leading up to Not Like Us and and um the hard part six. Mm -hmm. That was the peak of the battle. Responding, whatever you do after this, Kendrick or Drake, is not going to hit that same level as that peak in terms of attention. So you're going to have people that never even hear some of the stuff that you do after this. Mm -hmm. Right? You're going to have opinions that you can't undo. You might have facts come out. Outside of your regular response, you might have facts come out that people ne- never hear about. People have talked about this all the time on the internet where, oh, you got a, uh, you got accused of, you know, hitting somebody or whatever, or something illegal or bad, right? It becomes major news. And then the, the news comes out that, well, not the news, you go through a court battle, finds out that the person was lying, but they don't have as big of a megaphone for the fact that that person was lying. Uh, we already passed that. <laughs> That's how it is. It's like, eh, we just don't care anymore. But it's like, but I want you to know it's true. It's like, well, we just don't care about it all anymore because yeah. we just don't care. <laughs> Made my mind up, bro. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> that, so that's the messed up part of life. Some of it is I made my mind. Some of it is I already ate my food. I got my entertainment. I consumed it. I am i don't even care about the matter anymore at all. Yeah. I don't care about the such it, but wait, but what if it was wrong? I, I just don't care, bro. <laughs> like that's the messed up part, but the reality of all this. So because you're going to have a lot of that and the news cycle, the, the publications are going to post it because it's not going to get them as many views, which means it's not going to get out to as many people. It's not going to even touch a lot of people, right? after this point so the part of the battle that you have to win when you start getting not only the core audience and the beyond the core audience but you got people that are like what's all the conversation about like who who is this Kendrick Lamar person oh I only heard about him because he was on one of Taylor Swift's record and I'm a Taylor Swift fan I kind of recognize his name oh the Drake yeah I, I know Drake a little bit more like once you have those people start to hear about it and start to pay attention and see like start looking just to see what's going on that is the peak of the battle in terms of attention, all right? And now you are in the fire. You have to be aware when you're in that moment and or not because after that, it's not going to hit the same. Everything you did before that is going to matter because it creates context for the moment once you get there. But you got to be aware that the things that you did that first time might not hit the same mm-hmm. or you got to repeat because they might not go back to the beginning of the movie. You know what I mean? We're in a fight scene <laughs> of the movie. So it doesn't matter that I told him or I said this. Like, that was so interesting to me to, like, really see that play out. But, of course, we've seen this. It's like, oh, when we're marketing our artist's music and it's like, oh, the algorithms are catching it. Everything is moving. This is the time to double down, spend more money, post more content. Because a month from now, you can't just like, oh, I'm ready now. 
and then expect things mm-hmm. to happen. Yep. And that same thing happened in this beef. I just never translated or thought it would play out when it came to a beef as well. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, because it's like you literally have to cap on like where public perception and attention is in the moment. And yeah. it's like, yeah, there's, because I also think too, you know, speaking to the magnitude of the beef, um, a lot of it, of course, comes from just who they are and, and them doing it. But I also think a lot of it came from the fact that, like, news-wise, there was nothing happening. There was nothing else happening in those nah. week or two. You know what I'm saying? It's like we were post-Diddy News, like, a good week or two out from it. Yeah. And, you know, if we look at – if you look at social media as this giant place that's always looking for something to talk about and be entertained by, right? And so literally it's the, the internet jumping week to week to a new subject matter. And whatever the big subject matter is dominates until something new comes along – or, you know, it kind of goes quiet for a while. Like I said, prior to that Drake and Kendrick beef, it wasn't too mm-hmm. much else being talked about. Like I said, yep. we, were, we were fresh off Diddy stuff, like a couple weeks out. Nothing big had hit the internet. The internet was waiting for something to latch on to that waiting. could be, to be a conversation piece, and this kind of came along. So to your point, who was to say that by the time if Drake were to respond that he did, there isn't something else that dominates the news yeah, cycle exactly. more? Who's to say that information doesn't come out before then that, Changes public perception, and now now you're not even fighting the same animal you were fighting two or three weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? We've yep. seen that before, bro. The beast you was fighting now was this big. You gave it too much time to grow, and now it's this big. And now you came with a you came with a knife when you really yeah. should have came back with a sword. You know That's what I'm saying? What I'm saying. It's trying to make, <laughs> like it's ill advised to for a Drake to continue based on what's already been tagged on him in terms of those terms, and then yeah, in general, yeah. why I thought Jake Drake Cole was actually pretty smart pulling out of this stuff because. It's like it's a, a bunch of people that really don't care about you in the first place. You're just that entertainment. The moment that this doesn't serve me from a news outlet to post this because it's not getting enough views, I'm gonna move on. Mm-hmm. The next thing, you on to the next. And another way to look at it, which I experienced personally, and I saw it happen to many other people, is fan fatigue. Oh uh, yeah, like it was amazing. Mind by another track, another track, another track. Oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? And after a while, it's like, please, bro. please, bro. I need my life back. I love this, but I hate this at the same time, bro. I got to go to work. I got to do X, Y, and Z, bro. I don't got time to be in this rabbit hole. Please release me from this rabbit hole. Again, I love this, but I got to get back to my life. So I want the season to be over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but that weekend where... Meet the Grams came out. That's, yeah, that's the one he dropped like 30 minutes after the other song came out, right? Yep. When that shit came out, I was like, bro, why, bro? Like, couldn't you wait <laughs> like two, three more days, bro? I just got done with one seven minute song and they want me to come listen to y'all. I'm like, bro, please, bro. Like, it's okay. Like, y'all both have put out enough material to analyze yeah. over the weekend. Like, y'all can chill out for a sec. Bro, <laughs> that jump was, that was so crazy, man. Like, Please, man. So crazy, man. Cause I'm expecting Drake to drop Friday cause they tried it. They did that little semi announcement. I'm on a plane, I get a text like, oh dang, Drake finally dropped. Kendrick, what the hell? Kendrick dropped again? All right, cool. Like, Drake, are you gonna ever respond or did Kendrick move this? Cause you were supposed to drop. Up, oh, Drake responds. Obviously the meeting Graham stepping on Family Matters was crazy. And then I thought I was done. We were on the way to a club, you know. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I told, I, I hit my friend. I was like, Hey, bro, I'm about to, I'm about to be in such and such, man. I, I gotta check this out afterwards, bro. Like, I, I, I can't be, can't be doing this. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, like, so that just again, it's it's, it's interesting because I had never seen something like that before. That whole fan fatigue thing, but um. But it's a real, so you have to know, not only is the moment because there's a f- back and forth and you have the public attention from a standpoint of this is the moment enough happened to make it a big deal for everybody to pay attention, that moment's only gonna last for so long, not only because there might be another story that they're interested in or that they're tired of hearing, they have ADD and they wanna jump into something else to consume. There's literally the aspect of I've over consumed this in this period of time i've been oversaturated with this and you need to win in that window before any of those inflection points happen where the attention is going to go down because the fans have decided that this is becoming junk food yeah. and, <laughs> you like, know what I'm saying? and then to your point you were making earlier 
they literally put up a wall where it's like you could come with all the proof, all the receipts, mm-hmm. the best bars, but it's like they're already so energetically tapped out that at that point they don't even care anymore. Right. I mean that you know that funny enough didn't happen. Like no one pushed the envelope enough to battle against the fan fatigue, you know, yeah. like to try to get that last you know get that last rep out of them, yeah. but. I, I feel like it would have hit the zone. I feel like Drake could have came back with the, the song of the year at that point, but we'd have just been like, damn, bro, this song number 10, that's seven minutes long, bro. Like, I'm not even about to go. Like, I'm going to wait. You know what I'm saying? And then, bro, that that, doesn't, bro, I start <laughs> hearing stuff like, Kendrick has 10 more songs. No, Kendrick. Exactly, bro, please, don't please, try. Bro. I don't want to hear him, bro. <laughs> Keep that shit in the tuck, please. If please, I'm deleting the apps and stuff, bro. Like, I'm like, nah, man, I got to get rid of Instagram, Twitter, TikTok for a minute. Like th- that's that is such a real thing, and again, it's just something to be aware of. But with that being said, again, I think we just so they talk about Jay Z responding a couple more times after either, but either was like, nah, we already decided you won. Mm-hmm. Be aware when the culture decided you won, bro. Yep. Like just be aware of it. At the very least, if the culture decided, hey man, you just got your butt beat. That's a fight. You just lost a fight. You just got your butt beat. And you might say, well, I'm going to go home and I'm going to go get a weapon and come back to this battle. And it's like, but everybody else all went home and it's you and the guy outside alone and nobody else was there to witness it. Mm -hmm. The culture has to be, again, engaged. And it doesn't matter if you go back and beat the person later. It just doesn't hit the same, Mm -hmm. which is why since the culture generally has decided that um, Kendrick won, I just don't. And I I think it's best for Drake with these labels that have been put on him to be like not fuel any more of that his career can be fine outside of that you know outside of those things being true or not like that's the only thing that if i, I was drake like all right if i can prove somehow that that's not true and i know you know i know that's a tricky thing and a weird space to be on but like if there was anything worth talking about or i don't want to say talking about if there was anything worth convincing the culture of it's that being true or not mm-hmm. right who cares if there's people who think you're better than Kendrick because they're still going to bump your music, they can't bump your music, or if you keep being great long enough, you can do exactly what Jay-Z did. Everybody thought he was on near unanimously beat up on by Nas, and still there are people today, probably more people today that listen to Jay-Z than Nas because, again, Nas made the choice. He didn't want to be a certain type of artist and pursue a type of career, but like that's, that's him and Kendrick. Mm-hmm. Drake wants to p- pursue more visibility than Kendrick anyway, which Kendrick critiqued him for or whatever. But that also means I'm going to be able to use my words, but reach people. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm going <gonna be> <laughs> to be able to reach people that is not going to hear this message or be aware of this moment. So I'm again, like I can win um in the long run. So it's just not worth it. In my opinion, it would just be ego and pettiness in terms of like any reason to continue just get out while you can, in my in my opinion. No, I agree, man, because, like, that's what's so funny about, I don't want to say funny, but interesting about the beef is that, like, Kendrick could, I mean, he has done it, but he could just shut up, go back in the house, go back to doing whatever he was doing mm-hmm. before it, and just leave Drake to pick up the pieces of, of the brand that have yep. been shattered in this. And, like, that's why I say, like, you know, you can say what you want to say about who won the beef musically. I think if you go song for song musically, you can make some strong cases on either side. If you talk about brand, it's, it's a very clear one here. You yeah. Because one artist could really move either way and be all right, and one artist is about, to, to your point, spend the next five, six months doing damage control. Damage control, yeah. <laughs> Drake, I mean, we didn't mention this here on the pod, but like, yeah, Drake dropping 5% in streams. We did, it, maybe we did mention that. Like, that's just unheard of to lose numbers during yeah. a beef. It's weird. It's weird. Um. And another thing is we got to see people control narratives on their own platforms, Mm -hmm. right? Like you you talked about this, right? Back in the day, you would have had to go to the radio stations just to get heard. Today, we have a combination where people might use some streamers and things like that to leak their stuff or pages to leak their stuff, but they also could just post on their own social media is out there immediately, which I think plays a huge part in their uh, um, their ability to actually respond so quickly as well, mm-hmm. right? So, like, that is just a real thing. To be able to control your narrative and to be able to post on your own platform and verify, right? And I think that's why Kendrick did a lot of stuff from his main page, because he saw, like, some of those AI things that were happening mm-hmm. with, like, is this Drake song AI? There was that uh, Kendrick response that 
people thought was real or not. So that became a thing. Use your own pages. And if you want to use fake pages as well to let there be doubt as well, because I don't know if you heard that Drake song um, that came out later and nobody, a lot of people are blaming Drake for some of the lines that got said in that song. No, I don't think I it was that. a Drake verse that was popping. I only saw it on TikTok. It was a Drake verse that was on, I only saw on TikTok. In the same way that Drake did say some bad bars in terms of like some of the slave bars and things like that, it was a George Zimmerman bar in that song. And I heard it and I was like, yo, bro. But I do. Oh, I think I do. And then I went yeah. through it and I was like, well, I don't see it verify anymore. Now, could Drake had dropped some fake AI stuff himself? Because it was a long song and it was. I mean, it was pretty good too. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Like, so I'm like, either that's a heck of a ghostwriter, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it was pretty strong, or they they leaked some th- some fake joint for whatever reason, like strategically. But just know, strategically, you could kind of like test some things. It's like, oh, are people rocking with it or not? And then post it on your main page. Um, but you don't want to get caught and people realizing that you're doing that because then someone might say, oh, he's not even confident in his own stuff. But I've seen enough people. Like me, I just dismiss it because it was never posted anywhere officially. But I've seen so many people in comments still blame or um, or critique Drake for some of the bars in that song, and it was never validated. So, like you know, to each his own. Maybe you create a, uh, maybe you like all right, it's me versus Jacory. Maybe I create a AI version of Jacory leak that on the low and have Jacory say a couple of questionable bars. <laughs> it would be crazy, man. Yeah, in that, 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 you know what I'm saying? I couldn't even be mad at that play. Yeah, half people work that against <laughs> him. <laughs> like, damn, all right. And now it's working against him. You know what I mean? Like there's there's little things that, that they are available. Uh-huh. Just putting them out there. But they, that, that was that's a crazy thing that I've seen just the, the battle, the play of AI in general, the doubt, it because it became annoying too as a fan. Mm-hmm. Like you can't trust anything. It's just like, ah, oh, F all this. Like that's what, that's where you get. That's why I was glad they started posting everything on their YouTube accounts. Yes. Yeah, I was like, okay, they're, they're, they're taking ownership here. Glad, mm-hmm. glad to see it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That killed a lot of that AI noise. Um, and this is a whole nother thing. I'm going to say that uh, in terms of like, were beefs ever really friendly? How different is that? That's a whole nother conversation. But I think the reaction YouTubers, they played a huge part of this battle. Yep. We didn't expect that because you were enjoying it. You starting to listen to songs one at once because you want to see how this person reacts and that person reacts and how that person reacts. And that is enough of a change every single time. Not only might somebody teach you a bar, but you want to have somebody to kind of listen to. You know, that's like the, the vibe of reaction. Like, oh, I'm listening to it or watching it with my friend for the first time or I want to see how that per- person reacts for the first time. But the fact that you're doing that with multiple people is now embedding the songs in your head again as well. Yeah, and that's how I learned about, I will honestly say at least 40% of the songs that got dropped, I learned that they came out because of reaction. It's like, because at that point, my Instagram and my Twitter feed was just so flooded with just general conversation and like mm-hmm. the information that both parties were putting out against each other that like, it felt like for a moment, TikTok was the only place where I could, I could see the conversation kind of stick to the music. And yeah, I probably learned about like 40% of the diss songs in real time for the first time from like seeing a reaction video come from my timeline. And then I'd be like, wait, so let's just drop. And then I'll go look and see like, oh, it just came out 30 minutes ago. Oh, it just yeah. came out an hour ago. But like, yeah, no, nah, the, the reaction YouTubers were on it, bro. Or not even just YouTubers, but the reaction community, TikTok, YouTube, the, you know, the other two biggest ones, but I've seen some on Instagram. Like, no, nah, that was that was on it, bro. I can't even lie. Like, that was, yeah. you know, of course, they seen the hot moment for content, so I get it. But it, it felt like, you know how music people are talking about, man, we miss real journalists that were like, tell you shit in, in real time and kind of be there. I know they weren't reporting on information, but yeah, the music itself, but that was on top of it. I can't even lie. lie. <laughs> they were, and they played such an integral role in, t- in this battle. And I think, you know, you can start to gauge who's winning or not based on the voices of what the reaction YouTubers were saying, which most of them seemed to be pretty um, objective. Like they were reacting, mm-hmm. you know, to well to both songs. Well, I mean, both both artists. But just over after a while, things start to lean. I don't know how you put some of those in your pocket or how you try to use those in your favor. But I mean, K 
Kendrick did make a great move in allowing those people to get paid. Yeah, get montage, bro. That was crazy. Like, talk about this shit all you want. Talk about it all you want, man. <laughs> you gonna get paid every time, my boy. That was that was a beautiful move by Kendrick. And a lot of stuff that he did was just strategically on a, on another level. Um, another thing that we learned is in this era where things are homogenized and and Atlanta sounds like sounds get spread to New York and LA and all these other sounds are getting mixed. Having a regional sound or moment or owning your city, we say you can blow up and you don't need your city to blow up these days. In a rap beef, mm-hmm. having a city on your side, like in a real way, oh, it matters. Yeah, it matters. Yeah. It matters to be able to sh- to be able to mobilize real people for one mission. Man, man, we saw that in a real way when um, you know, not like us happened. Oh yeah, that was crazy. And I think it falls in the same bucket with the reaction YouTube is right, but there's a lot of validity in having other people speak other people speak for you on how amazing you are, which is what the reaction YouTubers are right. It's social proofing. It's like, hey, I thought this Kendrick this was hard, I'm not sure. I was twenty other reaction YouTubers mm-hmm. reacting and yeah. making the same face I made when I when I listened to it, so that's justified for me. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I wasn't sure. You know what I'm saying? They're like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, well, because uh, a lot of the, the city thing I think had to do with, you know, Kendrick basically being like, hey, bro, you ain't got a culture. Like, you ain't, you don't have a culture you can tap into. I do. Let me show you what that looks like. And then the culture comes up and validates. There's another group of people speaking well for you um, and, and putting different voices out. And it's like, I, I honestly think that was probably one of the biggest pitfalls for Drake. Because, like, once, Kendrick kind of made that cultural move and was like, you know, mm-hmm. not only did I say you don't have a culture, I'm gonna go stand on my culture to, sh- and then we gonna mobilize around oh, yeah, you. Stand on yours, bro. yeah, exactly. Stand on yours. Let's see what it look like, and then like nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I ain't see Canadian. You know, I could be wrong. Canadians let me know, but I ain't see y'all. You know what I'm saying? Standing up in droves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Making cultural moments around. Well, Drake. he didn't make the Canadian song. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. The Canadian or Toronto sounds, because you know. To Canadians, not a monolith. Canada's not a monolith, but like, well, what was that sound specifically that you could stand on and everybody instantly knew mm-hmm. that's Toronto. Yep. That was missing. Now, you know, I think a lot of that is a result of how Drake came into the game. Yep. Right? Drake was the the pioneer. Right? He was the Canadian artist that stood on Canada. He's not the big first big Canadian artist in, you know, America. Obviously, we had people like Celine Dion, uh, even Justin Bieber's, right? Mm-hmm. But he's existing in hip hop culture where where you from matters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he was the first one coming into that, and for good reasons. I can understand why at the time you come in with a more American sound, trying to pull from America because that's where a lot of the history is from, and then also, you know, my, people might not be as receptive to accents and things like that. And I would see that uh, early on. There were some people, I don't know how big this was in Canada, but there were some um, Canadians that resisted or resented the fact that Drake wouldn't have his accent. And all of a sudden, when he started doing his accent, it was like after Canada got cool in some way or accepted, you know, we didn't hear Drake speak on his accent at least like the first five years of his career. Yeah, at least, yeah. You know, um, so it was like he wasn't fully, some people felt apparently that he wasn't fully putting on for the city, but also just from American side we didn't actually get to experience or understand much about that side of the things. And, you know, you know, America don't be caring either. You know, we're selfish is like, we just care about our stuff. But, so, but if he had educated us more on that side and, you know, I don't know all the pitfalls of what a Canada sound in hip hop is or isn't or why it doesn't exist or if it does exist. But the fact that we don't have any education on that also prevents you even if it was a thing from being able to do it mm-hmm. and introduce it to the culture. Cause yeah. like, we don't know where that's coming from. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's like, if you ever plan to be in a battle one day, some huge battle, then these are the things you should think about. You got to start, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, oh, is my culture relevant or not? I got to figure it out ahead of time. Now, that's a good point though, man. Cause like in this new homogenized internet culture, it's very easy to say like, hey, I can move without being culturally tied to one place, which is very true. But then to very your true. point, it's like, you don't understand how much you need that cultural tie until you're in a moment where you need it and it's too late. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Cause there's a lot of artists that, you know, 
are from places that we don't really know or they don't or their city doesn't even know that they're from that place yeah but in rap that's less yeah. it's fewer and far between you know now who or here's a huge one we knew this and we said this jokingly but also serious over the years that producers need more credit but this battle you saw how much beats matter producing matters because boy you know the meet the grams that eerie feeling where you listen to it and it's like oof this is like I don't know man I feel like I should like make sure I'm around people like I can't just be listening to this alone this is some scary some real scary ish alright that production created the canvas for that um all the changes the switch ups that everybody loved on Family Matters on um Euphoria like that's because of the production when Kendrick finally had a bop right it was the beat that did most of the work mm-hmm. it's not it's not that Kendrick didn't say some stuff but the beat like if he didn't have it to that beat it wouldn't hit the same but eventually as, as soon as it came on and I'm just like oh snap I didn't know he was going this direction you know like so the beats matter so much in battles I think what Kendrick did well which I'm getting ahead of myself here is he touched on so many versions of it he gave the lyrical lyrical stuff for the that side of the culture he he did the bop he t- he did storytelling he really did and we're talking about hip-hop and culture he represented all of the values of what hip-hop culture likes to stand on mm-hmm. he gave you a little banger for the club he gave you the storytelling he gave you the technical lyricism like he was true to form and he showed he studied the game and cared about the game in that way. And again, there's a lot of people who wouldn't understand that or respect that, don't care about that because they aren't from the culture. But if 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 you know and respect those things, you will be able to identify as like, yeah, he did. Or he, and even, even if you didn't like how he did some of it, you can at least appreciate that. Oh, he actually attempted to. Drake didn't even attempt to check those boxes. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is interesting because let's just say if I'm advising ahead of time, I wouldn't have thought to check those boxes. This made me look at beats and all these things completely different. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, dang, like that's actually crazy that you did that. Some of this was like the fact that you're making real art in the middle of battle because his stuff is going to be studied, period. Like far into the future, 40 years from now, it's going to be studied. Like regardless of the battle, there was just, it's the way he approached it. He made like art that could stand on his own. Right, meet the Grams as a story and approach that could stand on its own, despite what Drake um, did. Of course, it got way more attention because it was against Drake the moment, da da da. But like to me, that's almost like offensive or something in some ways. Where to me, it seemed like he was so confident in his skills that he can also do some extra stuff at the same time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of a good analogy. I don't have it, but it's like if we boxing and I'm dancing. You know what I mean? Like one of those. Like that's what it felt like. It's like I'm doing extra stuff. I'm not just trying to dish you and say hard stuff. I'm up here trying to make real art at the same time. Like <laughs> that's interesting. We gotta address the fact that T does matter, but I think that it still did not dictate the battle as much as people think T dictated the battle. Yeah, it's because neither side really dropped enough proof to make it matter, right? Like receipts were coming alongside. And like strong receipts were coming alongside of T. Maybe it would have mattered. And this goes back to a point we had off camera, right? Where I was like, I just don't think they have enough personal issues against each other for the T to be like super strong. Most of the time with beef T is like really strong. It's like, no, nah, these individuals have had really specific bad experiences with each other that they keep going back to. And that wasn't really prevalent in this beef. Yeah. And it's like, you know, to, your, to the other point we made, it's like, does the T hit, right? Kendrick's T is, hey, you got a child, and you might be a pedo. The pedo part aside, because that's not even really T, that's just like, this is what we think based on what we It's not really T, because he didn't really drop new information to support it, right? The, the child thing ain't been a T. Mm-hmm. So, well, we've, we've been here before, so this isn't that surprising. And then you look at Drake's T, right? Drake's T is, hey, your wife had a baby by your manager or label owner, whatever mm-hmm. day free is. And you beat her. And it's like, well, neither of these things can really be substantiated. Like, no one on either side has ever publicly said anything. Yeah. 
you know, we would think that someone of Kendra's caliber, if that did happen, like something, you know what I'm saying, crazy would have been out about it. And so I think that's why T didn't matter as much here. Like neither of the other like really dropped any like earth shattering, like real like blow yeah. of information. And neither of them seemed to care about it enough to double down on it and provide proof. Or could they or not, or were they trying to like not go to a certain level? So the other yeah, or that too. who yeah. knows? Yeah. But that actually made me, you actually made me think about another mistake Drake made and he made he him and Kendrick both did this well and but Drake had a mistake in this category so the pedo thing and the uh kid thing mm. got another kid first people are like dang another one that that you do get an initial shot <laughs> right but ah, okay I guess I can see that All right like those two things yo man this dude has been hiding a kid mm. or this dude has been hiding a second kid that's a story that's really simple, easy to tell and spread, right? To people who don't even care, yep. right? You're like, oh man, yo, there's this rapper and he has, he's hiding his kid. The pedo thing, that's obviously a story, very easy, simple, and someone who doesn't care, doesn't know what I, um, mm -hmm. they know why that matters, right? Mm -hmm. Now Drake had two things. Yo, this rapper beat his wife. Mm -hmm. He's a woman beater, very simple story. Easy to understand, digestible, you know why it matters, narrative wise. The other one, his manager, well, first of all, he said Dave Free. There's a certain amount of people don't, I don't even know if Dave is his manager. Like, see, I don't even know, I'm in the music industry. I don't know if he's manager or not. I know they're close, and I know, and most of my level of closeness, an assumption of closeness comes from the fact that he's referencing it how he's referencing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so saying that, so many people are gonna miss it. A lot of people are gonna miss it if they don't even know who Dave Free is. Yeah, which is right? probably like 90% of the music exactly. people pay attention to. It. Exactly, yeah. right? And then when you start to figure out, okay, it's supposed to be a friend versus saying, and I don't know if they are best friends, but F it, like we lying or we just throwing stuff out there to stick, saying, oh, this guy's best friend, like his wife slept with his best friend. Somehow getting that real simple narrative because then it's easy to tell to people who don't actually understand what's going on, on a deeper level. Yeah. And I think those little things, they make a big difference at scale, All right? That's the difference between, you know, 100,000 people talking about it and 2 million people talking about it. Yeah, that's true, because you have to think about it as if it's water cooler talking, somebody trying to explain it right. So if I walk up like, bro, you hear about the Drake Kendrick thing, man, yeah, Kendrick said, you know what I'm saying, Drake got a baby and, you know what I'm saying, I mean, uh -huh. X, Y, Z, and then the other one's like, Yo, Drake said Kendrick got a baby by Dave Free. Who's that? Well, Dave Free is this guy in the music industry. Okay, what's it like? Well, he used to kind of, I think he meant, you know, so like you, yep. to your point, it's like it starts being all these layers to it where it's like, all right, all right, bro, like, okay, but back to the Drake thing. You say he got a kid? Like, like, I, I, yeah, I can understand that's that. what I'm going to remember and <laughs> yeah. tell, right? So you have to simplify that <sighs> if that's the direction you're going to go. Um, <laughs> And who who else gonna break all this down that's way for y'all? The people who actually appreciate it, I know y'all appreciate it. Appreciate y'all listening too. Uh, <laughs> and when we say T for those in the future who listen to this, that that uh the lingo has changed. We're talking about gossip. All right. One other thing I actually want to do in that same regard, we talked about the black conversation that is nuanced. And if you are black, you're already aware of this conversation. I want to provide context to that. I know it's late, but because it's um relevant and people might be watching the future or just not in the co not in the the culture Kendrick made this critique about how Drake leverages black culture and participates in it selectively mm -hmm. right even if you can get down to the point which I don't think he went down to this detail even the parts of black culture that you choose to participate and bring attention to are more negative tropes of the culture mm -hmm. versus the other side of it and you don't speak up for the struggle any things like that it's very opportunistic and capitalistic in terms of how you treat the culture some people misconstrued that as oh you're saying he's not black because he's mixed the moment you do that again that creates an issue is like oh yeah you don't understand this conversation and you might not belong here and again that's part of why some of his fans or people speaking on that particular issue actually hurt Drake because then you have to make you now make other people say do I want to be associated with these people all these people who are defending Drake are people who don't even understand what's up right 
So yeah, do I understand people though there's this nuanced conversation. It's not about, oh, are you mixed or not? There are plenty of mixed rappers that don't have this conversation around them. It was more of a conversation of how you participate in the culture um, and exploit the culture. It's more akin to someone who is outside of the culture than who is in it and appreciates it. And this alludes to some of Drake's mistakes, many of him, uh, his Drake's mistakes. So let's touch on Drake's mistakes. A lot of it came from either he doesn't read the room well or he just doesn't understand culture to a certain degree. The core culture that he was trying to speak to when we get into the black portion of it, right? You know, black is like the core of the core. Hip hop is beyond black culture, but it's the core. Uh, and then you have, you know, the, the layers beyond that. So there's that. Then there's another, there's two other core culture conversations, but we'll get to that in a second. But let's just start with the, the black um, side of things. One, he said stuff like, I don't care about your heritage. Ooh, that's anti, like all that heritage stuff is anti-black and anti-hip hop in terms of like, oh, that doesn't matter to you? You're kind of proving Kendrick's point. He made the bar about the slaves. Um, like you're trying to rap like you want to free some slaves. Some people that didn't hit immediately, Kendrick's flip made it hit. Me, it did hit immediately like, eh, like a black person wouldn't say it in that way. I get your point mm-hmm. of what you're trying to say, yeah. right? <laughs> Like you're, you're maybe trying to call them boring or some old stuff, however you're trying to say it, but to say it and use those words and slaves is just something that someone in the culture and what Kendrick's arguing would not use it and say it in that way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So again, it's working against you, which also I didn't, we talk about the resurfacing aspect of it. Kendrick didn't bring this up. This is you doing it to yourself and shooting yourself in the foot, which many of these things are, but that was uh, when he made the whipped and change you, like American Slaves Bar with SZA and a song a year ago. I didn't know about that. That surface resurfaced because of this, mm-hmm. right? And it ain't no excuse for that one. Yeah. Like, so just like, dang, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, that's that's tough. And, and, if, and something about the American slaves made it even worse. Yeah. Like, why, why, why you throw, <laughs> why'd you throw that? that, that was a, that's a wild bar. I don't know who told you that was wrong. That was cool. And, I, and these artists got to stop, like, all this artistic integrity. I'm not going to touch the artist. Uh, who's featured on my song. I'm just going to let them do whatever they do and rock out. Nah, bro. Sometimes you got to stop, stop them. Um, so says, I believe you have for, for, uh, for that too. <laughs> so he said these things and you're not reading the room, understanding that this is the argument being used against you. Or maybe you just don't understand that you are leaning in to the trap. Like mm-hmm. also in family matters when he was like, Oh yeah, I get it. The blacker, the berry, the sweeter, the juice It's like these things that we use as positives and you're saying it as a negative or I don't care. Right you're you're unintentionally maybe or maybe intentionally either way both bad shitting on the culture Mm -hmm. that you're trying to win over yeah yeah like it's tough like it's really tough when you really like soak soak in you know like that you this wasn't the kendrick part of the battle the the rick ross of the battle a part of the battle when he went to his mom and said oh you know, that guy's racist. It's like, why don't we bring in your mom in? It's a little weird in general, but, you know, your mom doesn't happen to be black. Mm-hmm. And then you're saying the he's racist thing in a way that a lot of people perceive that. And this is the culture. I didn't even consume it in this way. I just thought it was weird in general. Just the message. I was looking at it from that standpoint, like messaging your mom and this whole conversation. Why are you bringing her in this? But a lot of people, culture, we were like, well, that's some caring stuff. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's how a lot of people um, perceived it. Yep. All right. So he just had so many of these moments where he shot himself in the foot. Like, really? I think if we want to say win percentage, I think Kendrick might have 70 to 80% won this in many ways. But Drake, based on these criteria and the points we're talking about, but Drake, 20 to 30% shot himself in the foot. Yeah. All right. And I think in the long term, right, in the short term, maybe Kendrick won 80%. But in the short term, I mean, I messed it up. In the short term, Kendrick might have eighty percent won this. Drake shot himself in the twenty percent. But in terms of the brand impact, Drake eighty percent, uh, twenty percent is going to become eighty mm-hmm. percent in terms of what lives. Because all right, cool, Kendrick beat you in that period of time. Ah, okay, cool, we're past that. Drake, you got another bot for us. That's how most of the culture moves. Mm. But wait, you said these things. These things. Don't get forgotten. Yeah. Right. This 
detachment that you actually display some of these bars and some of the like downing the things that the culture really appreciates and identifies they're going to remember that and that's damage that's more impactful than this moment itself yeah and we're going to assume you really meant it because you said it in a heated moment you know what i'm saying so, oh, so, man, i even think about that that's the yeah. worst i hate when people say that but then at the same time that's that's how it goes yeah, bro, like, yeah, like, yeah, you've been thinking this the whole time <laughs> that's what that's that's the kind of vibe yeah bro so, cause that's true but i i, I think that i think what people choose to insult you with when they're upset with you says a lot about yeah what it says a lot regardless one hundred percent it says a lot <laughs> that they choose to hurt you there because certain people even if they know they could hurt you there they wouldn't even think to hurt you there mm -hmm. right and as a black person some of those places well they would look that like that as hurting themselves or mm -hmm. it just it just doesn't rock yeah. so that's the cultural detachment in that space oh but. For those of y'all who are like, all right, I'm hearing all this black stuff, man, and I don't get it. Like, it's about culture, understanding, whatever the culture is, and not. And now we're going to show you two other examples that aren't even black related. That Drake, eh, he didn't quite understand. AI. Oh, yeah. Using that AI, and this isn't something that touched me as much. So, this, But many artists, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. They're using you, Drake, to make this a real thing because you're the big artist and you hold this power. Right, he wasn't aware of the culture and the conversation that's being had around AI and the fear of AI um, that exists right now when it comes to artists and creativity. Yeah, like it's a touchy space, and I'm not even saying that all of the fear is merited or that should be the conversation or shouldn't be the conversation. The fact is that is what the conversation is, and your timing on that unfortunately worked against you. Yeah, right. I agree. And then obviously the the last one. Now, this is just not reading the room. The pedo stuff, right? Culturally, the timing of anything in that category, like any assault, any, I mean, obviously anything children related is just that to the extreme. We've been seeing these moments roll out like over the years. And this year, you know, because of a few key cases, mm -hmm. it's at top, it's the, it's the tip of the tongue. Right in terms of conversation, so getting accused on Kendrick's side by Kendrick or Kendrick highlighting that message around you definitely timing. Whoa, that's tough culture, and you're you're locked in. But the fact that you didn't read the room and then you mentioned Millie Bobby Brown, I don't even know if I should say it. I was just <laughs> like, dang, you know what I mean? But it's just because it's like you're bringing another name into the conversation. And how people feel about bringing that name is like, dang, you're putting a, a highlight, uh, you know, you're highlighting her. There's also some critique of um, like the whole I'm too famous to do this or I would have been locked up. Like those things, when we know them not to be true, it just shows a detachment, right, um, to it. And you have to be aware of how the culture is looking at those things. Some of these things, five years before, prior wouldn't hit necessarily the same or if you're talking to another audience or you're trying to win a different part of culture it doesn't hit the same and again like anybody can argue oh you nitpicking da 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 though the reality is this battle these types of battles are about winning culture and if you care about trying to win don't listen to the fanboys and fangirls who don't want the re uh, you to address reality this is the reality of what you're competing for so there was a couple other uh, bars that he had in in that regard around the pedo stuff but that again it was just desensitized that was an issue i don't gotta go too deep y'all get the idea another thing that i thought was really ill-advised really really ill-advised if this is all true let's say drake trick kendrick all right drake tricks kendrick kendrick mentions this whole darter thing and that's it he mentions it in the song etc he doesn't reveal the daughter, what she looks like, her pages, etc. But you know, people start digging up this page and then saying that this is the girl, the girl, right? So how did they find this girl? Did y'all? Well, some people were saying, or they're saying, you said that this is the actress that y'all hired, right? To pretend. Here comes the issue with that: putting a little girl in the midst of this type of moment. That's ill-advised, bro. That, that is not a good decision. 
Like, even if you are tricking the person and that does land that the trick happens, pedo stuff advised, I mean, um, aside, because that does obviously make it even worse. But with that aside, when you're in the heat of a moment, an ugly battle with another rapper, another grown man, and bringing a child into it, and not your child especially, that it just, it doesn't land well, right? So there's just all these little moments, right, that I feel like he made those mistakes for whatever reason, right? Maybe his team pushed him, maybe it was just like losing out on pressure, maybe he truly is desensitized or off um, in terms of understanding. And again, there, what does my um, trainer say? Oh, he plays tennis, like unforced error, meaning you made the error. Nobody else like forced you to make this error. It was just like, it was coming from you. So I think he made more damage, put more damage on himself in mo many moments than Kendrick did. And without his errors that he made in these little cases, I think he might have, I don't know, maybe things could be different in terms of the outcome and how people are seeing it. But those those are the primary mistakes to me that Drake made. Not like like his music. Like, And this is what y'all, and again, we're talking about these things. We know music matters. We do know music matters. But we're not here to critique the best songs and all this stuff. We're here to talk about the other elements that might amplify, all right, or or dilute the impact of the music. Because we can't ignore that all this other stuff matters. Like we can't ignore that strategically Kendrick dropping fast after Family Matters impacted the way people were able to consume Family Matters. Right? Like the strategy and the things that you touch and how you navigate this cultural space has way bigger impact um, on this than you, most people are willing to admit. But the reality of the world is people love and hate based on the delivery more than the actual substance. No, I agree. And I feel like if you are hard pressed to believe that, pay attention to the internet for the next couple of days and weeks. Neither of them are dropping music, but they're both still running smear campaigns against each other. You know what I'm yep. saying? So they like that, this. they says a lot. Yeah, they know. They like, hey, like the music battle might be over, but the the battle of public perception is still going on. Like, still going on. <laughs> still going on, which we didn't highlight heavily. Uh, we're, we're nearing the end, but we wanted to be thorough on this again because this is more of a documentation of a moment. Um, and we're not about to talk about this every single episode and do up updates and a yeah. bunch of <laughs> But uh, we didn't have we want I want to touch about talk on uh, touch on the things that Kendrick did well that like why he won, which is not that many of them. But um, before I get there, we didn't highlight enough why the the smear campaigns, basically how much teams are involved in the same way you do an Instagram PR campaign like you pay to get posts on blogs. These people are paying for bs to be posted on kendrick bs to be posted on drake or for their music to come out or even in some moments maybe even to say this line means that yep. there's moments where there's money being paid otherwise we don't find some things out at all yeah now at some point it becomes so hot everybody just has to post it. They're looking yeah. for another post on it. Yeah. Like literally like, oh, let me go go on Twitter, see if I can find something else interesting that I can post. But until you get there, you know, or uh, or if you know someone's not looking for it, you're going to have to make sure it gets pushed out into the either. Kendrick, why did he win? Or some things that contribute to the perception of him winning. That's the more important part. Well, I want to, you know what? Let's take a little break. I'm We're going to play a clip or somebody else speaking. He has hit every facet of the fucking internet that you can to get at somebody. Memes, quotables, Instagram captions, sounds on TikTok. He got like 20 fucking sounds in rotation on TikTok right now. <sighs> now this nigga just made a call and response and a fucking dance. I wouldn't be surprised if this nigga is selling merch by 10 o'clock tonight. If yo, if he's selling Hovey Ho shirts, I'm buying one. <laughs> oh my God. As funny, <laughs> as funny as she said it, 
the fact that he did, Kendrick did check so many of these boxes. If you want to like summarize a lot of what we just said, we talked about reasoning and how to think about it. She just talked about it in That's a really short way. Yeah. Like, yo, if he did have shirts, like that would have added to it. Yeah, that would have got me. I ain't gonna lie. I would have got one. <laughs> I'm like, you know what, man? I do got 25 on me, man. Like, imagine. <laughs> imagine that. Like, so, like, checking these boxes, and these are obvious boxes, and they don't have anything to do with the music itself per se. Something that I can, and I like the fact that she even um, differentiated that there is a caption versus a meme. Yep. Two different things. Yep. Like you said, pop out and show niggas, that's a caption. That's a caption, yeah. You know what I mean? And you got a sound. That's a different part, right? Like there's all these different um, elements and having them in there, whether it's intentional or not, or he just happened to do them all is a different story, but that definitely contributed to the win. And just to get into these other topics, we talked about strategy, right? Strategy in terms of one, Kendrick stepped on Drake's track. I think that was the biggest- He was gonna took his moment, moment away. Right there, taking momentum away. Yeah. Secondly, the way these songs connected in terms of like controlling energy, which is something that people should take note of throughout a track, for to go from all these slow songs, right, and to create expectations and then to come out with a bop. I think that hit harder, right? Because yeah. people are looking for it. None of, none of, neither one of them gave it at all um, necessarily, but Drake was closer to it just mm -hmm. where he was doing musically. For Kendrick to be so low and then go high, took people off guard. Yeah. On top of the back-to-back -back drops, that's another part, thing strate strategically where he won um, in terms of just how fast he released four tracks in five days yeah crazy you know what i mean 30 minutes plus 30 <laughs> right <laughs> right and on top of that because of the variety of songs like different types of songs tell hitting on all these different elements of hip-hop which all are valuable um but I, I we alluded to that earlier or touched on that earlier i think what doesn't get acknowledged is the energy control that he had all right one, not allowing himself to be sped up before he first dropped all right with euphoria timing that like decently to be hurt to make sure it's hurt and it's just not a part of the regular fodder all right and then now that i got control of this moment bam i dropped euphoria up oh, i think drop i think he tried to step on drake with 616 all right honestly i think he tried to because drake was rumored to be dropping late at night once he saw drake saw that drop all right whatever um but he, like he created an energy Right in a story, a narrative, he was planting these seeds throughout the entire moment, which is interesting. I'm not advising everybody to do that, but it's interesting how he controlled the energy by not only did he step on Drake's junk, he um, dropped "Meet the Grams," which was such a low energy, like a, a eerie energy that took people to a different space and it takes you takes you down. And then he was like, "Oh, I'm the one who gonna put you up." Right, like he took you down, slowed things down, made people feel. Oh, and I feel like he relieved people because, all right, family matters was too far in a lot of ways. Like when you start getting into kids a lot more, but then also he, Drake made the mistake, which I, we didn't mention, by continuing to give other people energy. But Kendrick, like, bro, we don't want to see anybody. This is you. You can try to convince us that it's this one v twenty, but in reality, this is one on one, mano on mano. Say that mess, but. The rat the other time we really that was a, a big mistake I think yeah. he made but Kendrick for like for us to hear family matters is like oh okay but Drake went hard and that was a, a good joint but then Kendrick to take it to that another level where it's like oh this is getting uncomfortable like this is crazy disrespectful mm -hmm. right and this is feeling like this is gonna go bad and I think that acknowledges when we're talking about dissing that Kendrick had the best diss as well now I will say that that's my more opinion. Everybody doesn't agree with that one. A lot of this stuff is just more like this is objective and this is what works. But this is why I personally feel that some of the a lot of stuff that Drake said and even a lot of stuff Kendrick said in most of their songs, eh, like I'll damn near laugh at you, bro. Like <laughs> if I know it's just not true and I'm I'm a confident dude, like whatever you say, whatever you want to say, I'm gonna laugh at you. But the junk that Kendrick did with Meet the Grams, like come on, bro. Like we have a problem for life, basically. Like I'll say that, <laughs> you yeah. know, I don't want to act like a tough guy, but like people push you into positions, even if you're not a tough guy to say, Hey man, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do some of these things. And I think that showed culturally when the way people reacted, where a lot of people were like, eh, like I'm tapping out or I'm not, I'm not for this. Cause you were making it uncomfortable. 
because the the level that that this went to. But then he brought you back up because Kendrick couldn't come back with nothing else in that space. If he came back with anything in that space, it would not have gotten the love. Like right after Meet the Grams, he would not have gotten the love that he did on those songs when they dropped by themselves. Like he had to come up with a bop in hindsight. If he yeah. did drop, he didn't have to necessarily drop. You know, maybe Drake could have been the next drop. But boy, I didn't want to hear nothing go deeper than Mr. Graham had. I didn't want to go, I mean, Meet the Grams did or even in continue in that direction. Personally, I, I just wasn't going to be able to listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because then cause it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Like you have to remember that at the end of the day, as deep as this might be for you, or I guess you as the artist involved, surface level, this is still just entertainment to the audience and the yeah. artist that forgets the entertainment aspect in that moment is typically the one that, that loses or loses a lot of momentum. And, you know, I said it off camera, but I think that for me personally, that's why the Not Like Us hit so hard was because, I mean, one, it's something you would expect out of Drake, not Kendrick. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like, to your point, it's like you're waiting you're waiting for Drake to make that move without even thinking about what would happen if Kendrick makes the move, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, if Drake had done it, we'd have been like, oh yeah, we, we was waiting for it. Like Family Matters came, right? It's like, okay, we were all waiting for this, like this version of a song, right? Like the the, the more boppy one, the one that's like, okay, this is the one you could tell he he thought this was the bullet. Like, oh, this is gonna be the one they jamming, they gonna be turned up to. And then Kendrick sweeps him he 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 does something that's unexpected from his camp and is not only unexpected from his camp but is a move of the other player so it's like i'm going to take your move before you can do it do it arguably better than you yeah and people aren't going to see it coming from me so it's going to get more attention out the gate just like the 616 title too yeah and i, and I honestly think like this goes back to the pain but i honestly think that too is like where drake kind of messed up and you know artists learn from this Every, you said it earlier, right? Like every artist has their own unique advantages and disadvantages. Every artist has their own unique, well, I won't say all of them, but the good ones have their, their own bag of tricks they know how to dig into. Drake has had a very clear formula and bag of tricks that has worked for him and other beasts, and for whatever reason, he chose not to go into it until it was too late. He, I feel like he was so arrogant in his beef. He's like, hey, bro, I'm going I'm to I'm play this on your level. I'm going to do the slow lyrical bops, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do the, 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 the storytelling. I'm gonna go bar for bar with you. And meanwhile, Kendrick's over here like, all right, whatever, bro. Like, you can't touch me on that. And since you wanna play that game, I'm gonna do the shit you do. Mm. And it's gonna be better, right? And I feel like if Drake had came, it, I think you said this when we was talking off camera. If Drake had led the beef with Family Matters and that had time to breathe, right? Cause we can assume that not like us, it, it feels like in all of the songs that were created, it felt like not like us, not like us took the longest for Kendrick to get to. Like it, it took the time frame of the beef for him to land to that point versus yeah. Family Matters. We could tell Family Matters was created early because it was basically part two of the push ups. Yeah. So it's like if he had dropped Family Matters at the beginning of the beef, and then to your point, Kendrick wouldn't have been able to undercut his moment with a just as energetic, if not more energetic song, right? It would take him weeks to get to that point. It would have been too late. Like, it would have been, it would have been already yeah, been deep. Yeah, we with a song, love. Like, yeah. you would have been working. He would have been playing catch up. Catch up, Way exactly. Way more catch yeah. up. So if he had dropped Family Matters, maybe he could have dropped Family Matters when he dropped Push Ups. Not Push Ups, uh, Taylor Made. Yeah. Because then now all that time we're waiting on Kendrick, we're sitting with Family Matters. That would have been, been different, yeah. That would have been crazy. I don't know, bro. Like, so, like, strategy, that timing and how you drop, man, it makes a real difference. It makes a real difference. Like, if anybody's saying, like, the music was trash um, in one way or another, like, again, you just invalidate what you do. Like, because these are, these are artists, none of them are offering up trash. Yeah, like, exactly. Trash. And I, I saw that more, again, from, like, a Drake side, like, his fans. And that's, again, started to create some more friction why people didn't want to go along. Like some people might critique like, oh, I didn't like, I didn't think that song hit as hard or whatever. But I saw a lot more on the Drake fan side that were like, uh, Kendrick Johnson's just trash or it's just boring or I can't listen to this or I don't want to think. It's just like. Now you've just been a hater. Yeah, you, you've been a hater and you, like when you, especially when you throw the I don't want to think, I always say like, hey man, don't ever catch me like on camera where, where my mom might see me or anywhere documented. Or my family see me saying, I don't want to think. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Like it just it just doesn't play well, especially when there's a legitimate part of the culture where there's some that desires substance is supposed to be rooted in substance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's a good point, right? It's like it goes back to showing how out of tune that side of the fan base is. It's like because yeah. people that are culturally in tune, we're looking at like, oh shit. Like we've never we've never gotten this caliber of artists again. Like from a technical standpoint, yep. a resource standpoint, you know, not musicality, you've kind of debunked that. But let's just say from a quality of music standpoint and a re a resource standpoint and a public attention standpoint, this is the most even has ever been in, yes. in any beef ever, right? Like, cause in most beefs, there's always an artist where it's super one-sided for them in one or all of those categories, right? I go back to, to if we look at Drake versus Meek Mill, you look at those categories, quality of music, resources, and public likability, Drake was clearly the winner in all three of those categories when it came to Meek. But then you do it to Kendrick, it's like, all right, music ability, even if one isn't arguably better than the other. Resources, they both got hella money, they both got access to the same accounts, they both got access to the same behind the scenes people that can help them move the needle, so you know, it's, it's you can't win the battle that way, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, and then public likability pre-beef, um, you know, Drake had a little bit more of a, of, you know, a, a lot more brand things out there to kind of make people look at him differently. But like pre beef, I mean, they both were on pretty good standing with the public. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, the beef just forced people to pick pick a side and, and start kind of airing things out. But it's like, you know, and we said this in the beginning. Like that's this is why this beef, I think, more than any other beef in history, is the most educational because it's the only beef where it was it was really a fair fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Like you can't say like, oh, like I said, when Drake and Meek were beefing, I saw a lot of things about at the time talking about just like, oh, Drake is hotter, Drake is whatever, whatever. But it's like, bro, this is as even as, as we could hope for it to get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for real, <laughs> for real, bro. Like, and I just like want to touch on these last two points. Uh, one, like we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, Kendrick's allegations had a stronger impact in general. Right. Like they just, it was just the bigger liar, the thing that was going to affect your career a lot more and a lot stronger. One, having to do with kids. Yeah. Um, and two, because of the nature of your business and you being more commercial, any allegation has a bigger impact on you career-wise. Yep. Um, and then also, if you think about just a traditional or creative, I don't even call these, call these allegations creative because there's just some serious things, but Drake's primary thing was like your girls effing around or she loose or I smash your girl type of typical hip hop narrative that you're going to be prepared for as a hip hop artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's a narrative you hear over and over again. So it just doesn't hit the same, that, that side of it. And then, um, I don't want to say it's pe people are desensitized to like, like domestic violence or anything like that. But I think one, just comparatively to again dealing with kids, it's way way smaller in just how it's looked at, and then also there's more of an implication of not just this one person versus you're going out and doing it to all these other innocent people and kids. So it just it just hit a lot different. Um, and I'm not we're like this is not us advising you to <laughs> create a bigger lie in your future beef. Whoever's listening. But, <laughs> but if the lion starts, you, you might you might want to think about that. But once the gloves are off, bro, like hey. embellish. <laughs> Cause it actually bro, end of the day, the people watching can't verify, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> so yeah, those are the key points. Like hopefully we were pretty thorough again. We really don't want to touch on, on this again, but we do uh, obviously wanted to make sure we, we knocked this out and document it in a very real way. If y'all have comments, it'll also be really, really helpful to provide y'all thorough opinions. What we don't want to see is, hey, I think Drake won, because that's just not the reality. Do, do we, what we do want to see is why I think Drake should have won or why he could have. Um, like maybe he think he did something better, right? But why do you think people miss that he did something better? We need something more thorough and thoughtful than Kendrick hate, Drake hate. Kendrick glazing, Drake gl glazing. It's, it's not really beneficial to anybody. Don't expect that from our audience in general for the most part. But again, this is here to help people understand how to win the battle of perception. Part of that means subjectivity and that there isn't a clear cut way of saying, yep, this person is infinitely way better. You know what I mean? Uh, we don't have a, a legitimate scoreboard 
like sports and understanding that it should inform how you come into this type of game if you're going to play it. Yeah. Because that's just the reality of it. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. All right. The reality is it, the, the reality is what you create. Remember that perception is reality in this media game until people figure out what the reality <laughs> is, and now they perceive what's true to be true. <laughs> this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary podcast. I'm Brian Man Sean, and I'm Corey, and we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.